Hello, hello, and welcome everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful um, Friday, Friday, <laughs> Friday evening. Um, hello, Anina san. Okay, hello, Anina san. Hello, Dark Thomas. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm a little bit late, and um, this is a little bit chaotic. I was the light from work so yeah today we're going to continue our uh, the longest journey playthrough and uh, actually off stream so so last stream we stumbled upon um, a library in mercury uh, the enclave uh, that contained some books that we wanted to read and the problem is the font was so small that it was impossible to read. It was like three or five pixels tall cursive font. Uh, so off stream, um, some days ago, I actually played with, uh, uh, researched a little bit that problem. And um, looks like we have a solution to that. So if you guys are interested uh, in the game um, folder, you have this uh, GUI any file, GUI any, and here you can actually set um, your preferred fonts uh, and the sizes of the fonts. So this can actually fix everything. So I didn't actually change a lot. So if we compare this, um, this file to the original one, I made a copy. I only changed two fonts, uh, is font size, font six and seven. So these two lines, uh, originally it was 15 and 13, and I set it to 17. So these two fonts, uh, the font six, I believe is for uh, the diary. So I increased uh, the, the, the font size there a little bit. And uh, font size seven is for uh, the books. And yeah, uh, it, it's not ideal. Like we don't have um, like anti aliasing on the font in the game, uh, but it's much more readable. It's it's like night and day. So let's take a look. Oops, I closed the game folder. Whatever. Okay, here it is. But yeah, all the other fonts I left untouched. And yeah, I've made another save, so I didn't progress through the story, but I did save. Uh, I, I did go to the enclave uh, really quickly and save there just to test the fonts. Um, so let's let's go and check it out. So first of all, uh, the diary. Now it's a little bit better. It's not a big difference, but yeah, now it's much easier to read. Wait. Yeah. So yeah, let, let, let's let's read the few entries of the diary once again to refresh the memory what we did uh, last stream last week. Um. <clears throat> so Monday, I have no concept of what the Arcadian or Mercurian calendar is like. Um, but at home, it would be July uh, 31st. Come to think of it, what a year is it here? Anyway, it's not really uh, the reason I'm, wri I'm writing an entry in my diary. Tobias told me about a library where I may be able to find some answers. The library is at the uh, Sentinel Enclave just outside of town. And I'm supposed to speak with Maenstrom named Yerin. Uh, he's the keeper of books or something like that, which probably translates into the equivalent of a librarian. 
I went to the library, yes, me, imagine that, uh, to look for some information about those flying creatures uh, that Brian told me about. And with Manstrom Yearin's help, I found just what I was looking for. They're actually called uh, the Elatian, and there is a tribe of them living on an island south of their alliance, which is, with, which is such good news considering how much I love water. Um, and that was my sarcastic voice, by the way. Now, who do I know with a ship? So yeah, we did try to find a ship, but uh, the sailor didn't want to go there uh, because of multiple reasons. But yeah, we tackled one of those. The old sailor down by the docks agreed to help me get right south on the white dragon if I help me get his bird bird back. So yeah, we did free the bird. Um, how difficult can that be? I keep wondering uh, how much he really cares about that bird. However, if he was willing to risk uh, gamble, to risk gamble it away in a game of cups. Um, but hey, uh, that's none of my business. So yeah, we did free the bird, we did return it uh, to the old sailor. And the old sailor um, said that um, the, the current captain of the ship, the white dragon ship, uh, actually owes him, so that captain was forced basically to accept us, but yeah, we have some problems. I've turned into everybody's little errand boy, girl, person. I do um, favor for one person and boom, I'm running around the entire Northlands solving people's problems. This time uh, it's some whacked out magician, sorry, alchemist, up uh, north somewhere, he has get get this captured the wind. How the hell do you capture the wind? I mean, I can just wave my hand a bit and voila, instant wind. But who am I to argue? Magic's never really been my forte. So I don't have a choice. I'll have to travel north, try to talk uh, this alchemist, uh, this roper clerk. Clax, so this is the name of the alchemist, uh, guy into releasing the wind and then come back here. I don't even know how much time we have left before chaos destroys the vaults, but I'll have to hurry. Um, and since I'm not particularly familiar with the way of the Northlands, so to speak, uh, I will need a map. Okay. So back into the game, we actually do have a map of Northlands, but this is not meant for ourselves. It's a map of the Northlands. Uh, we need to deliver that map um, to, oh my god, this is spelling. One map of the Northlands to be delivered to Ton Lyak at the Journeyman Inn. Yeah, we need to deliver the map to Ton Lyak. Uh, who is actually a lady, um, how do you call them? Hello, Dark. how are you doing? Uh, a navigator, who we also need to go to um, that Alayak island. So, yeah, we couldn't find her. Looks like she's watching for. He's looking. She, she's looking for a job, but yeah, uh, there is no wind, so there is no job for her, and we couldn't find her in the inn. Uh, and that map is meant for her. Uh, also, yeah, we did get calculator for some weird reason. We went. We won that from uh, the caps guy. Uh, so yeah, we were researching some books, and this is one of them that I was experimenting with. So yeah, now, previously we had like a third of the page uh, filled with uh, the words, 
but now we have a proper page. The, the font is not ideal, but it's readable now. So I'm actually going to skip this book real quick. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. So we we're gonna start from the beginning, and I I really want to double check the books and read the books that we haven't read because yeah we did skip some because it was too hard to read. I did find the text of the books. Um, uh, on the wiki, so we, on the wiki, so we did um, try to read some. Who's, you, who's my character? What's the backstory? So this is April Ryan. I look like a serving maid. So um, basically, she lives um, in a world which is like a distant future of our world, or something like that. Um, she is a student, 18 years old, uh, she studies arts and uh, one day, well, not one day actually, she, she started having some um, some nightmares about some weird world, about some dragons and stuff like that. Um, and then some of these nightmares, as she, as she calls, uh, calls those, uh, started to seep into real life and not only for her but for other people as well uh, so yeah people in her world world did start to see some weird things appearing um, and yeah uh, looks like she has a special ability she's uh, what is called shifter and she can actually shift between worlds. So there is two worlds, as we discovered. One called Stark. This is the world where she lives, which is like a world of uh, progress and um, science. And the other one is called Arcadia, um, which is world of magic. And uh, yeah, looks like April has some kind of ability to shift between those two worlds. Some people can shift between those without being a shifter, but that takes a lot of effort. Um, so... Uh, where was I? So yeah... Uh, she did shift here and discover a little bit of Arcadia and then came back uh, and she discovered the story of these two worlds. So they, the two worlds were uh, one single world before. Uh, but I actually don't remember why, what was the exact reason, but uh, that world can, could not live as, as is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of problems with the balance between, like, science and magic and stuff like that. Um, and that world was forced, basically, to split apart into two worlds. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a very complex story, but it looks like um, one of the clans... Uh, of how do you call it um, of those people who are supposed to watch over the, the worlds and like rule them uh, they want the worlds to to combine together again to gain advantage of uh, like progress of the Stark world uh, that it's made through the, throughout the years uh, and basically gain power or something like that. Uh, but that would probably mean absolute destruction. So yeah, she's now, uh, with the help of other people, um, like very powerful people, she's now trying to prevent that from happening and also find um, a person called Guardian, which is like not really a person, but more like an entity. 
that watches over the worlds and the balance of the worlds. Because looks like right now the Guardian is gone. And... Um, and uh, all the stuff that was happening, like all the uh, magic uh, people appearing in Stark and visions appearing in Stark and, uh, and vice versa, that was because of the balance being, um, being broken. So, yeah, we, we now have a quest oh. actually. Oh. Goodness, it's you again. Crap, you I initiated the dialogue. Sorry. Uh, Bye now. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. So yeah, the story is a big and more or less complex. Uh, but yeah, currently we have a big task. Uh, where was it? Cortez. Clipper Building 87 Yeah, so basically this um, Sundays are made for sleeping in, Sundays are made for walking around uh, Sundays are not made for going to the worst neighborhood in t No, this is not it This is not it, this is already after Mm. I think this entry Oh my god, <laughs> that, that's a lot um, Yeah, this is when the story of the balance been told to us So this should, this should be a little bit later Also, yeah, I need to refresh that in my memory as well, because yeah, I couldn't tell you why the worlds were split. But I think I get the gift of, gift of it. So uh, there are two worlds. One is Stark, the world of science, what, uh, what I call Earth. And then there is Arcadia, the world of magic, what people here call uh, Earth. Two Earths, then which gets to earth then which gets a little confusing uh, but not half as confusing as what came after a long long time ago there was just one earth and this earth uh, had both magic and science but mankind has always had a habit of screwing things up and this is why they did it uh, on the original earth they got too powerful learned how to move stars um uh, and, and be gods by combining powers of magic and science. So an alien race called Drakian Kin, I see. So Drakian Kin is basically like dragons in our culture. Uh, but yeah, this is more this is more deep. This is not like just creatures. This uh, these are like fathers of everything or something like that decided to interfere to prevent mankind from destroying their own world. Um, one of the so-called kin found this religious movement called the Sentinel uh, of the Fathers, or the, or the Fathers, who are self-appointed self watchers over the balance between magic and science. The Sentinel were instrumental in dividing the Earth into two dimensions, Stark and Arcadia, science and magic. They also put a woman in charge of controlling a channeling the balance between two worlds, a guardian of the balance who lives in a tower in a sort of in-between realm and who's replaced every 1000 years by a new guardian. So then life goes on for like thousands of years until the sentinel starts uh, squabbling internally and the sentinel priests and Stark decide to break with their Arcadian friends and found this new cult or whatever called uh, or whatever 
called the Vanguard. The Vanguard um, wants the worlds reunited and they plan to do this by controlling the Guardian himself or herself. Um, this is why they have been uh, do this is what they've been doing for a few thousand years now, destroying potential guardians by performing experiments on, or on them. So yeah, they uh, tried to find guardians or, or the persons who are going to become guardians. They kidnap them, they do some experiments on them. So right now there is no guardian uh, in that in-between realm that she was talking about. Um... Anyways, the current Guardian couldn't stay any longer and he left his tower in the middle of nowhere and now the balance is, is, is in danger. Apparently Chaos can really do some serious damage to both Stark and Arcadia, which does remind me um, of my dream. I'm not sure uh, what's the right word anymore. I think... Uh, the black can thingy, the vortex that attacked me, that's probably the sign of what's gonna happen if somebody doesn't do something to save the balance. And I'm seeing, mm, sensing this coming on, uh, because that's how it always goes uh, in these things, um, that it's somebody is me, because apparently I'm a strong shifter, somebody, I'm a strong shifter, somebody has to find the guardian uh, get him back in the tower to save the balance and then do something about the vanguard uh, get them to see that they're screwing with the magic and they shouldn't be screwing with uh, hey easy I do that kind of stuff for breakfast uh, why is the balance capitalized is this like an artifact or something oh, uh, it's like a force like uh, one of the forces, main forces of the worlds or something like that. Um, because yeah, this this balance that they call, um, as they call it, um, basically is balance between the, the science powers and the magic powers. And if it goes out of whack, out of balance, then chaos um, starts appearing and basically that screws up with everything um so where, where is the actual tasks that um they discussed with Cortez? oh here is cortez one second cortez is very so cortez is a person who um mm, who we met in Stark and who actually understood that we were having some uh, visions or dreams of the Arcadia world and he understood that we are um, a shifter by nature uh, the, the April is shifter by nature so um, yeah he's been our guide through all these worlds but Cortez cannot shift himself he can only channel April's energy to allow her to shift or something like that but she can do that spontaneously apparently <laughs> uh, so Cortez proceeds to finally tell me everything and we have a plan which sounds good to me uh, but then I really don't have much experience with plans I'm usually like let's do whatever but now we have a plan with a capital P even okay so we as in Cortez and myself, ha have to find this guardian guy, uh, the key to his realm, an old stone disc with four jewels. So yes, to to enter that realm, we need a key, and apparently the current key is broken. Uh, and there is uh, another key, um, which is supposed to look like a disc with four jewels, but apparently that one was destroyed well not really destroyed but like mm, dismantled because it was a um a target for thieves to steal to steal it um but yeah we will come back to that later we have a book on that i really want to read it <clears throat> 
and uh, the way back into the place. So yeah, we also need to find where is the entrance to this uh, in-between realm, because apparently nobody knows where it is. And while all this is going on, I'm supposed to restore balance to chaos um, and do the laundry, probably. So yeah, just to think that two days ago uh, all I had to remember was where whether a customer ordered a double decaf latte or a low-fat cappuccino. Uh, there is a lot to be said of simple ignorance. Anyway, tomorrow morning I have to find other information I can find on the Vanguard. So yeah, we did uh, find some information on Vanguard in Stark World and looks like it's a big conspiracy. So they... Uh, they are in control or they're basically creators of the of a church called oh my god what is it called basically a big church which is like a commercial church in that world which is like all the churches are nowadays um and they are basically in uh in control of government and stuff like that so huge conspiracy and those are the guys that we are up against. Uh, so yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of story. But yeah, now we need to find basically the entrance to the um, to the guardian realm. We need to find the guardian. We need to find the stone, which is the key to to the realm. Um, and yeah, one of the magical races or magical people here in Arcadia can help us because they have like infinite memory they watch over uh, the worlds they uh, write stories about that and stuff like that oh. so yeah we oh, were goodness. it's you again oh, you gave me such a fright we were basically trying to find where they are in this library. We we did find that, I but see some more books? but there is a lot more books oh, here. Me. What a silly question! With interesting information about the worlds and. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? So yeah, a lot of books are on different topics and different uh, events. So could I see that book about the uh, Mayram again? What is? I, I don't remember. Could what I see it. that book about the Mayram again, please? Oh, the Mayram. Oh, certainly, certainly. Hold on. Okay, let's take a look. So apparently there are Mayram here in this world. And it's a little bit weird because all the sailors talk about them as cannibals that eat people. But it doesn't fit because this I is not... I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. This is not what cannibalism is. Cannibalism is not one species eating other species, but... You know what I mean. So this is the book on Merman, and it actually... Um, contains some different info. So, Myram, also Merman, Mer people, Merians, magical people who reside in. So, mag uh, as how they call magical people here is like magical creatures that are not like normal people. Um, and yeah, there are different kinds, different races of those. So, Merman are magical people who reside in the depths of the o Great Ocean and other seas. Little contact has been made with the Merim, uh, who are believed to have been quite numerous in the past, uh, but are now dwindling in numbers. Confirmed location of Merim cities is between the Briston Toll and Gein, uh, Centering on the Sea of Songs. Legends of Merman, Merpeople, Marians are rampant among sailors, 
The stories portray the Merum uh, in a grotesque and violent light, um, betraying the truth of the largely peaceful people. So yeah, looks like they are not so scary, they are not cannibals, they are peaceful people. Uh, although not much is known about the Merum, their religion apparently centers around the belief of a uh, benevolent god who lives in the immense depths of the great ocean uh, and who, who brought uh, the Merum to earth from a place distant and wonderful. So yeah, we were discovering this tale uh, that there is a fallen god who fell into the depth of the sea and looks like like in there are some hints about it that this god is actually one of the drag king it's not a god but it's a dragon are you done and we need to Let find that back for you we need to find the drag king um also but that was about the merman also, this librarian is just so slow. But yeah, now I'm glad that I can actually read those books because some of them were extremely interesting oh. to me. Oh, goodness, it's you. I'm gonna I skip some dialogues because we did go over that. I'm looking for some no matter. Uh, we did go over over all of that uh, last stream, but we failed to read some books, unfortunately. I'd like to see that book about Elation. Yeah. I'd like to see that book about the Elation again, if you don't mind. Elation. <laughs> of course I don't mind. Uh, just give me a minute. I did find something. Go, 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 dude. <clears throat> the island of Elias, near the Briston Atoll. Yeah, so this is the book that we were supposed to find <clears throat> on this race, Elation. Uh, a crafty winged people who have recently dwindled in numbers and whose ability to fly long distances has been steadily diminishing over the past few centuries so yeah there are uh, basically magical people who can fly and who can tell stories and remember stuff the elation are known for their ability to remember and tell stories from before the dawn of the mankind and up to modern events the largest known tribe of elation uh, with whom traders have occasional contact resides on the otherwise uh, uninhabited island of Elias in the Briston Atoll. So this is where we need to go to dig up some more information on where to find, like, the garden, the disc, and, Are you done? Uh, let me and all other stuff. Oh my god, this dude is so slow. Oh. Oh. Could I see some more? Oh, I'm looking for no matter. So no this I need one. to read that scripture again about the stone disc that was split in four. Yeah, this is the key the to The scriptures can always tell us more each time we read them true. Uh, wait here. Yeah, this is about the disc, uh, which is a key to the Guardian Realm. <clears throat> and yeah, it looks like we found a place where the disc should be forged back, t back into existence once we find all the pieces of it. It's basically right here uh, on top of this I did enclave. Find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Uh, 
chapter 16 of the eight scripture uh, apparently all the scriptures are not available only a few of them only a few of the books this is one of them chapter 16 uh, in the eight scripture uh, the scripture of breaking uh, regarding the disk of the balance and the events that came about when the disk was broken. The scriptures tells us that the disk was kept at the enclave for many thousands of years, safely guarded from any threat by the respect held uh, by every man and woman uh, for the authority of the fathers. So, the fathers were basically the authority that ensured that this disc no, no one tries to steal this disc or something bad will happen to them but with descent came disobedience and disobedience uh, brought Im immorality and immorality uh, began theft tyrant soldiers aided by sentinel traitors attempted to make away with the disc but were thwarted by the white of the king herself so white of the king is one of the dragons a white dragon the white dragon and apparently we did met her in one of the first visions one of the first nightmares as april calls them um and yeah that was an interesting interesting conversation so, uh, by the weight of the king herself intervening, although forbidden to do so, on behalf of the fathers. The disc was brought safely back to the enclave, but the threat, was linger the threat would linger in the minds of the minstrum and the vestrum. So it became that... Uh, so it became that the disc was melted in the forge of the dragon's mouth, shaped into the elements of four magical people, and given to these respective people for safekeeping until such a time when it was uh, decreed that the disc should once uh, more be whole. So yeah, looks like they dismantled the disc, they forged it into four different pieces shaped um, into the elements of four magical people and it was given to f these four uh, corresponding magical people one stone to the gentle souls that sin in the dark and and shape the earth between their toes Again, these riddles. So one stone to the gentle souls that sin in the dark and shape the earth between their toes. I have no idea what that could be. One stone to the watchers of the woods, the ones who are outside. One stone to the two that make one of air and of sea. And one stone to the keepers of the dark flame, the eternally dark, the mariners. I have no idea who those are, but yeah, looks like we would need to find it out to get all those pieces and restore the disc. But when, when the time comes for the disc to be whole again, one person will make a journey to the four who... who who hold the pieces and the pieces will be given willingly because there will be no doubt of the righteousness of this person it looks like this is supposed to be april but yeah you we will uh, see let me take that back I'm looking for no. Uh, yeah, this is the scripture about the stone. 
I'd like to read more about the Dry Kin. Why, of course. I will get the book you're looking for immediately. Oh my gosh, it goes the long way. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really glad that we can now actually read the books. And it's a little bit easier to read the diary as well. I did find something of interest. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I look like a serving maid. Yes, you do, April. Go. Secrets of the Drag Ken by Menstrom uh, Ahiak? I don't know. Forward. The Drag Ken are known by many names uh, throughout the Twin Worlds. In Old Town, uh, they are often referred to as Draken. In some variations, in Low Town, Draken. In the Southlands, the world uh, Dragic refers to, or Dragic refers specifically to the winged lizard shape traditionally associated with the kin. In Earhat, Earhat, the eternal spirits of the kin are called simply Drek, regardless of their current shape. In Stark, most cultures refer to the kin as dragon, drage, drache, dragone, uh, through, uh, though this usually refers only to the winged lizard-like shape and not to the spirit inhabiting the shape. In fact, in fact while in Arcadia, the kin are respected uh, and revered as eternal spirits with great significance in the balance and the all. In Stark, the kin are, uh, are mostly creatures of mytholo mythology and fairy tales. However, in some Stark legends and scriptures, notably the Christian Bible, the name Dragon is associated with the forces of evil, and thus the religious uh, Canonations to seem to have uh, carried over in somewhat distorted form. So this is another interesting um, aspect. They mentioned Christian Bible and the dragon is associated with the forces of evil. So the Stark world, which is supposed to be like our world, but in the future, uh, is ruled by this Church of Vanguard which basically turn into the evil side and so maybe because of that they somehow shaped, shaped the minds of people to uh, associate the dragons with forces of evil even though they are not or something so interesting idea who or what are the drag kin? Why not ask who is the creator or what is the all? Questions thus asked, asked will remain in perpetuity uh, unanswered. For they are in uh, truth unanswerable. To, ca to cadence on all knowledge of the creator into one answer is futile as is any attempt to define the all without describing every single element that makes up the all. Also, yeah, I'm not sure what they call the all. We haven't stumbled upon that yet. So also with the drag kin, we cannot answer who is the kin or what is the kin, but we can provide some answers to the simpler questions. The questions that deal with uh, what are what we see and hear and feel, and what we have been told by the kings them themselves. Answers that together may give us, if only the faintest hint of the whole truth, uh, then at least some indication of 
who or what the triad kin are. Quote at burn, uh, born uh, of the emptiness between the burn of the emptiness between the stars. There is the eleventh scripture of the balance, the scripture of time, shaped in unison with the all, part of the all, yet outside the all. Uh, drag, 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 kin. Note the ancient high tone narration of drag kin. Why so many narrations and interpretations of the drag kin uh, from culture, from culture to culture? The kin have always been shrouded in mystery, and from mystery rises legend and myth. The kin seem. The kin seem content to be seen as nothing but tall tales and figments of a bird's fertile imagination. So yeah, are you done? <laughs> they are like mystical creatures that prefer to stay like that. But yeah, it looks like they are one of the main creatures or entities in the world <gasps> the oldest ones could i see some more books oh, sure. i'm looking for no okay that's about uh some topics so mm, this were the books about certain topics that we know i forget thanks Ed. we all forget some um, but we have also some books specifically some named books that we can ask for I'd like to read the S silver spear of Garim Garimon. i'd like to read the silver spear of Garimon again Garimon. certainly <clears throat> that was an interesting book we read it on the the wiki and yeah i want to look into that again okay that also describes some events that involve the drag king and actually the the white dragon herself <clears throat> come on dude go faster please i did find something yes 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 just show me The Silver Spear of Garimon. In the glory days of uh, Bakshava, before the drought, when Garimon was the greatest city in the known world, uh, the Parak of Bakshava decided to forge the most powerful weapon in the world to challenge the mighty white dragon. The Parak and had grown greedy and bored. His uh, treasure hold filled with the riches of the world and the desired nothing except the one thing he could never have the unborn daughter of the white dragon the fairest purest and the most beautiful creature in the universe and i think we've seen well we've seen her well not in that form we've seen an egg that belonged to the white dragon he had asked the white dragon for her daughter's hand in marriage but she had refused scolding him for his uh, in what in as I, I can't read this word. Insolence, oh my god. Um, and warning him to keep his distance from immortals. And so the Parekh sought the advice of a mighty sorcerer, the, dar the dark and cruel Aeos, to learn uh, how to kill the one of the drag kin. The sorcerer told the Parekh. Um, of the white silver of Mount 
tyranny. Not tyranny, but ty tyranny. The strongest substance in Arcadia. And how it could be forged by, ba by magic to kill even one of the kin. The Parak ordered his army to go north, north <coughs> across the ocean and to bring back enough white silver to shape the weapon. Uh, when his men returned with the rare metal, the Parak ordered the finest blacksmith in Bakshava to his castle where Aeos, the sorcerer, cast a spell to create an unholy forge. Ten days and ten nights uh, it took before the exhausted blacksmith uh, could present a tall spear to his um, emperor. But before the spear could be used to kill one of the kin, it had to be ba bathed in the, in the blood. Uh, Beheading the poor blacksmith and the soldiers who had retrieved the white silver from the Mal tyranny, the Parek's private bath was filled with their blood. As he, drove, as he dropped the silver spear into the red bath, uh, Watched over by Aeos, a terrible scream erupted, and scream rose up in a red, foul-smelling cloud. When the steam lift, lifted, the blood was all gone, and the spear was glowing in a deep red color. With, ter with the terrible weapon now ready to be welded, the Parag issued a challenge to the White Dragon uh, to either surrender her daughter to him for marriage or to suffer a painful death at his hand. Enraged, the White Dragon refused uh, him yet again and flew to meet the Parag, his sorcerer and his southern strong army to the green fields outside Gorimon. Of the magical silver spear she knew nothing, and the Parag kept it wrapped in a cloth by his side. Bring your forces around, Parag, uh, warned the white dragon. If you do not, I will lay waste to them all. I wish my men no harm, lied the Parag, for, uh, for this is between the two of us. Uh, he then rode forward, alone, and dismounted his horse, but stayed within the reach of the spear. The white dragon landed before him, and she said, You are brave uh, to face me like this, when you know you cannot harm me. Then the Parak raised his hand uh, as if to greet her, but it was instead a sign to his sorcerer, the terrible Aeos, uh, who cast a mighty spell to hold the white dragon while the Parag drew his silver spear. The white dragon uh, fought bravely and she was close to escaping the sorcerer's magic, but the Parag was quick and he, tr he, thrust, he thrust the magic spear into her chest. She screamed in pain and anger and the sorcerer's spell could no longer hold her. Rising on her beautiful wings, blood pouring down on the land below, uh, she cursed Baksheva, her Parak, and her people for all time. Wherever the white dragon blood fell, the land turned arid and grass became sand. The Parak sent his army to follow the white dragon and to bring back her egg, but the dragon grew. Uh, but, but the drought, drought grew, and within days, the once proud empire of Bakshiva uh, was turned into a desert. Then followed a fierce storm that tore across the land for 100 days and nights. And then the dust set. And when the dust settled, uh, there was nothing left of Bakshiva but two coastal cities and a few scattered o oasis. Uh, it is said that in the buried ruins 
of a lost capital, wrapped in the arms of the Parak who dared to test the immortal, rest the silver spear of Garimon. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. <clears throat> Okay. I'd like to read that history book on Mercuria. I'd like to read that history book on Mercuria again. So you liked it then? Uh, one moment. Yeah, we didn't read this one. And this could be interesting. And there is also another one, the folk tales or something like that. We've read only one story of it, but there is another one or two. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Travels in the Northlands by Jeremy the Discoverer, the first part. Uh, in my many years as a traveling poet and bard, I have journeyed uh, far and wide across the fire realm of Arcadia, and I have seen sights most people have not dreamed. I have uh, stood on the magnificent and terrible southern capes in the midst of winter when the storms are their fiercest, while waves oh my god this is <laughs> hard to read while waves as tall as the towers of uh, Al Altaban washed over my frozen body I have witnessed uh, the monstrous beast that lurk in the in those dark and deadly waters of the south of the south. Swallow brave. Oh my God! This is this is hard to read. Swallow brave gallows hall. Okay, galleons. Oh my God. Creatures of size of mountains that with a flick of a tail can touch the depth of the sea and the stars themselves. I have crossed the great ocean from north to south and from east to west and in the course between st stranded and in the and in the course being stranded on desert islands uh, with no sustenance but what I could gather from the sparse vegetation for a month at a time I have ridden oh my god I have ridden the giant Al Alguan across Changagriel the wasteland <laughs> oh my god from um, Altaban to Monterba and further south where the Taruk, the oasis a few and far between and I have seen the sight in no, have this, I have seen the shifting dunes above the ruins of Gorimon uh, precious jewel of the Bakshira, Bakshiva Empire uh, conceded for centuries by by the course 
and treasure sand. And I have journeyed for west, carried on good will and destiny by good will and destiny by shadow ships to the strange and unknown cliffs of a world and seen by most. Yeah, this is basically when I gave up. Uh, this is really hard to read for me. World of an unfamiliar town and customs, a world of great wonder and mysticism. I have seen all this and more, but the fairest sights still I have seen in the lands of the north. From I read to border mountains, from Tyrant to the Bay of Fire, no sight can ever compare uh, to dawn at the Mount Tyranny, looking out at the plains of mm, Ned Nedra, where the wild stallions run free in the thousands. <laughs> I don't know. And to look on the city of uh, Coruscant, the Pearl of Fire, why the boiling sun sets in the ocean beyond, the, the slow waves reflecting dark yellow and red as they lap slowly upon the sandy shores, is an experience truly treasured and near forgotten I don't know this lands are blessed by the creator shaped by man yet wild and free and fertile home to the greatest cities the most precious sites of the most uh, cultured and civilized people in Arcadia of all the fires I have rested my uh, weary legs by, uh, of all the taverns where I have uh, learned the legends of tale spinners and memories, memorized the songs of bards, of all the lands where I have wandered from city to village, it is to the Northlands I return time and time again to learn even more. Join me... No. Join me now, for I will invoke uh, in you the very emotions I first experienced when visiting the sites of treasures of the northern lands. Join me and I will surely be bring you there to the exotic myths of the blessed land and you will pine for its ragged coast and green woods and its hardy people and like me you will never um, rest until you can return to yonder shores Mercuria. Oh, Mercuria. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> this is too complex for me to read. Uh, oh, Mercuria. The unkept diamond of capitals, though art by truth of fairest, uh, thy counsel many seek of knowledge kept within the centuries, sought and gathered by men wiser than the ages, brought neither I don't know, by world of mouth. Mercuria changed, changed though not the course of war between thine people. Diplomat, wise man, magician, all this and more. 
Uh, I don't know how to read this. This is basically out of my English skills. Thou hast without equal the mark of merit and virtue. Written by German uh, Erthrin, the poet. Uh, the august capital of you read the unified country mercurialize on the hardy southern coast of the Northlands halfway between so Mercuria is the town that we are currently in <clears throat> mercurialize on the hardy southern coast of the Northlands halfway between Tyran and Coruscant it is a port of it is a port of call for merchants, traders, adventurers and pilgrims from all the continents. The place of commerce and diplomacy uh, for millions of humans and the other species. I read is a strong and proud land purse between the plains of Northland yeah, no, between the plains of Nedra to the north by the land of the Tyrant, to the west the Great Sea, to the south and the forest of the Northlands to the east. And inhabited by humans, Dalmari, Tyrant, mole people, and veneer. I read was formed after Mercuria emerged as a major uh, center for diplomacy and trade and became the banner under which the surrounding lands united as one. I read is a de democracy uh, currently led by the chief council of the Arid flag. Lord Igvan Delon. The High Council, composed of the ministers who are governed by representation, resides in the Mercurian, tall, Mercurian Hall of Assembly, flanked by the palace and the barracks. The Aridis are traditionalists and their form of government has barely changed over the last few millennia. In high tone, Arid means unification or assembly. <clears throat> Mercuria is one of the largest cities of Arcadia, the capital of Arid, and a center for trade, diplomacy and cultural diversity. Populated by a large variety of races, from human to veneer, Mercuria has grown from its uh, origins as the birthplace of humanity to a city of all Arcadians and the hub of the civilized world. Founded 20,000 years ago at the, sh at the shore of then an unconquerable ocean, it is the first known permanent centel of, uh, settlement of the emerging human race. Initially left to its own uh, devices by more developed races. Mercuria grew large and fat and wealthy with newfound confidence it passed through a period of expansion which gained which gained in their reputation as a merciless aggressor which soon brought violent attention from the tyrant in the west and in the west and Dalmari in the north after years of war mercuria was decimated and subsequently rebuilt with 
sufficient reinforcement to weather the attacks from both sea and land. So this is why it has such tall walls, I guess. <clears throat> Peaceful times followed. Um, what? Peaceful times followed. Whereupon... Yeah, this, this font is still a little bit hard to read. Whereupon Mercuria settled um, into the role uh, it ha oh my god <laughs> so peaceful times followed whereupon Mercurio settled into the role it has in today's Arcadia although all surrounding areas fall under its jurisdiction there is sufficient self-governing and few central taxes to appease all the most disgruntled. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't understand this. Please speak simpler English. The huge areas of farmland around the city benefit from the well-kept roads, markets and the busy export to other lands. Nearby villages benefit from the military might of Mercuria, protecting them against uh, Roven barbarians and tyrant armies. And Mercuria also provides the people of the Northland with one of the best and busiest ports in the in Arcadia, allowing travel to distant destinations around the world. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. <sighs> okay. I think there is one more book. But yeah, now we know a little bit more about Arcadia and uh, Mercuria. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. Yeah, Arcadian folk tales. I'd like tales. to read some more Arcadian folk tales. Did I mention how much I like folk tales? Just a minute. I did find Yes, yes, yes. Sandra the Faithful Wife. So yeah, I think this book contains two tales and we've read the last one about the merman. At least I think that was about the merman, but we can read it again. So Sandra the Faithful Wife. Sandra was married to a brute of a man named Kare or car, Kare, maybe. He was a bully who drank, cursed, gambled and bit, bit up his wife uh, when he'd lost coins uh, at the uh, cup's table. <clears throat> still when he'd lost coins, wait, still Sandra treated Kare uh, with respect and care she fed him when he was hungry, she made his bed and washed his back and she lay down with him when he told her to. She never complained of her hardships to anyone, even though some days she woke up with bruises all over her body. Despite her husband's treatment, Sandra was a beautiful woman with lovely dark hair and green eyes and men would admire her when she went to the market for food uh, or the town. I don't know. Wait, what? 
or the foot or the town well for water oh my god uh, but none dared approach her fearing her dangerous husband more than they admired her beauty and grace people would say poor Sandra poor, poor, poor Sandra wait Sandra not Sandra poor Sandra <laughs> she deserves better than what she has she is so good and patient even though her husband uh, mistreats her even mistreats her every day but no one was uh, willing to do anything for free to free her from her husband um, as they all feared his wrath she crossed her own path they would say uh, and it is not our duty to interfere on one day a, a tall and handsome prince rode into town and visit to visit with the elder consul when he spotted Sedra carrying two heavy buckets uh, from the well to her home uh, on the edge of town he was taken with her beauty and youth um, and he jumped down from his horse to help carry her buckets home on the way, he offered Sadra courtship, but when told she was already married, uh, he bowed respectfully and excused himself for acting inappropriately. That night, Sadra's husband heard about the prince helping his wife, and after striking her down for letting royalty interfere with her duties, interesting. Um, he strode drunkenly, for he had already had his usual fill of dark ale, uh, towards the tavern where the prince and his cohorts were staying. When Kare arrived at the tavern, uh, the prince was eating dinner, and when told Sadra's husband was there to see him the prince stood and waved the man closer i must con congratulate you on your good taste of uh, marriage said the pr said the prince for your wife is the most beautiful and good-hearted woman i have ever met and then he offered Kare a seat and the tall mug of ale but the angry husband did not appreciate the prince's uh, advances, and he drew a sword and lodged, lunged at the prince before his guards could, could react. The prince was quick and lucky to avoid certain death, and before Kare could make a second strike, the prince had recovered his sword from where it stood by the wall and stood ready to fight the brute leave him leave him be called the prince when his guards drew arms uh, and ran to protect their liege this is between him and me uh, smiling briefly he nodded his head to Kare and stood to attention obviously his skill with the sword was Formidable. Kare, a Kare, a coward at the heart, uh, knew that uh, if he fought fa fairly, he would surely die, and he sheathed his sword, but but loosened the knife and had oh my god, but loosened the knife he had tucked up his long sleeve. My pardon, prince, said Kare. My love for my wife is such that I am blinded by jealousy. I offer you friendship and apologies. He extended uh, an open hand to the prince and smiled, smiled abroad. 
and smiled. Oh my god. He smiled a broad lizard smile. The prince, unaware of Kare's uh, mistreatment of his faithful wife, smiled back, put down his sword and extended his own hand. Your apology is accepted, sir. When suddenly Kare's knife was in his hand and moving in a blur towards the prince's exposed throat. Had it not been for the quick eye of a nearby guard, um, who with the broad side of his sword struck Kare uh, on the side of his head, the prince would have been dead. The knife carved a deep scar in the prince's shoulder, but did no serious harm. Kare was taken away to the town prison uh, to be judged when the sun rose. His crime was surely punishable by death, especially if Sadra would testify to his cruelty in front of the judge. Afraid of Kare's tyranny, uh, the townspeople now spoke of Sadra's suffering by her husband's hand, but Sadra would not herself, even now, speak against, the, against her husband. And instead of being sentenced to death, Kare was sent away to work the king's mines for 25 years. Taken with her faithfulness, uh, the prince yet again offered Sadra's, Sadra courtship. But again Sadra declined, for she was still a married woman. Then one year later, Kare attempted to escape the king's mines by killing two guards and climbing the walls but he was shot down with an arrow and died in, a in agony and disgrace. Again, the prince visited Sadra's town, bringing condolences and a uh, renewed offer of courtship, and this time Sad Sadra agreed. Month later, a prince and Sadra were married in a glorious ceremony, <clears throat> and then the old king died and prince became regent and Sadra his queen. She was a, a good she was as good a queen as she lent her wait. She was as good as she was a oh my god <laughs> please she was as good a queen as the land has ever seen and she was loved dearly until the day she died and her funeral was the greatest and most cheerful in memory. Okay. Let me take a sip of water. <clears throat> and this is actually the one that we read last time, but let's read it one more time. The Children of the Lake. There was a village uh, by a lake where no couple had born a child for 20 years. The villagers um, were desperate, for without children the village would wither and die. Um, and they turned to their and they turned to their god for help. The next morning, 50 young children rose out of the misty lake. Uh, and wandered into the shores, which to the joy of the childless women... Wait. Much to the joy of the childless women. We are, your, we are yours, said one of the children, as long as you remember one thing. You are never to fish from this lake again. Instead, you must learn to hunt in the forest and live of the of the land. The villagers agreed, though they, they worried they might go hungry, so they, since they were never used uh, to catching and eating. F wait. Since they were used to catching and eating fish from the lake, but it didn't take long before they had taught themselves to hunt and grow wheat and uh, potatoes in the fields. <clears throat> Eighteen years passed, and then one day an old man 
grew tired of rabbits and deer and potatoes and bread, and he longed for he longed to catch a fish. He longed to catch a big fish and cook it over a sizzling fire. He took his boat to where the villagers would not see him, uh, and he sank his line. Almost immediately, he caught a large trout. But as he was rowing back to shore, he saw the children of the lake wander from their homes back into the dark waters from where they came. Their mothers called for them, tried to hold on to them, begged them not to leave, but they would not speak. And one by one, they disappeared into the lake. <coughs> The old fisherman then saw as the children sank into the musky waters. Now they turned into large fish and sped off into the deep. He was shameful uh, then and dropped and dropped his catch back in the water. But it was too late, and the village would forever more remain childless. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Okay, is that oh. it? Do we have oh. any other books? Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. Yeah, that's it. Actually, I don't feel like reading right now. Very well. Bye now. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so. We now need to go to the north to see what's up with that alchemist that apparently um, have stolen a wind. So yeah, this place looks like this is the forge where we need to um, like recreate the disc to the Guardian Realm. It's a circular hollow about 20 centimeters across and about 5 centimeters deep. A small recess about the size of my fist with a thin duct extending from the recess to the circular hollow in the middle of the floor. Yeah, we have four of these recesses and they lead to the center and we have the dragon's mouth right here. The dragon's mouth is pointing straight down at the middle of the floor. The dragon's mouth is pointing straight down at the middle of the floor. There's some weird color in um, on the top of this head, um, but okay, looks like that's for, la for later. Now we need to go north. So yeah, this is the new location that we discovered, the road north. So let's take a look, what's up there. It's some kind of cattle, but not the kind of cattle they breed in Kansas. Yeah, definitely not. Into forest. Okay. It's a farmhouse. It's a small barn. Those monuments? They're enormous. Like man-made mountains. I wonder what they are. What they were made for. Yeah, this is interesting. Another monument? Monumental. Monumental, sure. Okay, so this is it, I guess. I don't see any options here. We can go back to Mercuria. It's a storehouse on pillars. Can only go into the forest, so let's go. I don't think we can enter this. Bird! <laughs> He escaped. April, come back. April. <laughs> okay. Looks like the bird escaped. Which is awesome. 
Can we go back actually? No, no bird anymore. Okay, let's go into the forest. <laughs> the bird escaped. It's a discarded wagon wheel. Okay. Can't do anything about it. Let's back to the farmland. My game is lagging a little bit. I've no idea what you can do here. Oh. Bird. Hello. Do you always travel like you got a two-headed Vesperian nymphate on your tail? I couldn't keep up half the time. Crow, is that you? Of course, there was that pair of stunning Robin Redbreasts. Twins, did you know? Not as if I could just leave them without a kiss or two. Or twelve, <laughs> as it turned out. <sighs> Maybe I'm just out of shape after being stuck in boxes and cages and knapsacks for the past 20 years. Yeah, probably. I guess it is you. Of course it's me! How many birds do you know with both good looks and a sense of humor? You got a sense of humor? No, oh, funny. Nah, <laughs> that's funny. What are you doing here, Crow? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? How about a nice to see you, Crow, or I've missed you so much, Crow, or at least a glad to see you out of that chest, Crow. Yeah. It is nice to see you, Crow. How did you escape? Cunning, milady. Of course, that keg of Andrigan stone liquor the old geezer got his hands on didn't hurt. I've never seen such a shameful display of public drunkenness in my life. Well, not since the last time I had a thimble full of wine. Yeah, boy, were those ladies in for a surprise. When they were told I could talk, I'm sure they didn't count on my encyclopedic knowledge of Dolmari obscenities. <laughs> the old man was going to gamble me away again, you know. Went straight back to the cup's handler after the, uh, celebration. So, I decided to split before they put me back in the cage. That place was like a prison without the amenities. And let's not even mention the food. Did you ever try roasted El Guan Dung? Ugh, pooey, duh, don't ever. So I pecked a button here and some soft tissue there and fled. I had nowhere else to fly, so I decided to join you on your uh, quest. It sounded like a spot of good old fashioned fun, like a bird zone adventure. It's not as if I came after you because I like you, though. <laughs> you don't have any feathers. Don't have any feathers. Thank God for that. Okay, if you want to join me, I wouldn't mind some company. I'm guessing you'll be using your wings, though, and not your feet? The ground's no place for a free spirit like myself, baby. Besides, I hear there are a lot of good-looking birds in this forest. And let me tell you, they don't parade about on the ground like winged chickens. Just try to slow down once in a while. Let me catch up. Sure. But how do I get your attention if I need to talk to you? Can you whistle? Like this? <laughs> Sorry. But wait a second. I got a little flute. I could flute. use it to call you. I'm not a sheepdog. Let's get that straight. You play your tune, and I'll consider your request. I won't be flapping to attention like a tame soldier hawk. Deal. We better get moving, though. It's getting late. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll try to keep an eye out ahead in case there's trouble. Okay. <laughs> that was nice. We have a new entry in the diary. Mon Monday, July 20th, uh, 31st. I have no idea what year it is in Arcadia. Uh, on the road no north. Oh my god. <clears throat> it's hard for me to speak now. My dear friend is very nice, very funny, and he's a bird. Um, 
the token bird crow uh what is this crow the bird i think he's not actually a crow but uh, he reminds me of one and his personality is a lot like cowboys my favorite cartoon character um he escaped from he escaped from his owner or captor to be honest and decided to join me on my little adventure i'm just so happy to have somebody to talk to and with luck i'll be able to help me out he'll be able to help me out once in a while as well we agreed that i will use my flute to call on him whenever i need him you may not be able to tell from my writing, but there is a big uh, silly green on my face right now. I think it can increase this font size a little bit more. Okay, let's try it out. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Uh, okay. So we need to keep in mind that we can call the bird crow. So I guess there is nothing more here. What's that red mark? I need this card well. Okay, let's go into the forest. Yeah, I guess we'll go into the forest. What are these stones? So I don't see anything here. Oh no. Oh, hello. I think we've, we've seen this guy in the cafe. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Please, human, don't kill me and skin me. I haven't even sung to the soil yet. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you or skin you. Oh my, that is good news. Very good indeed. Who are you? My name's April. What's yours? In my language, it's Bandu Umana Banta Aurubana Bitana Benoit. It means the little one who tries hard to live up to his father who sings to the soil. That's a mouthful. So, um, what do I call you? You can call me Ben Bandu, the sad little one. Ben Bandu. Banda is the name of my people. We are the little ones. Banda, okay. Why are you sad, Ben Bandu? I'm looking for my brother. He's been gone in the forest for many days and I've not heard him sing to us. Our people don't walk about the forest much. It's too dangerous for us. You haven't seen my brother, have you? He's short, about my height, with a tan coat and a mischievous glint in his eye. You're the first mole. The first Banda I've met. Oh dear. I hope he's all right. A lot of our people have disappeared this summer. What happened to the Banda that disappeared? We don't really know, but there's something evil in this forest, something that doesn't like the Banda. I shouldn't be out here looking, but I must find my brother. If I see him, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. Aren't your people called the Mole People? That's what the city dwellers and farmers call us. They say it with sharp tongue. Moles. Dirt diggers. They don't like us very much. Our given name is Banda, the little ones. Or the Banda Banta, the little ones who sing to the soil. Banda Banta. How do you sing to the soil? When we're old enough and we found our voices, we just sing. 
and the earth shapes itself to our needs. We live in harmony with the earth, just like the birds do with the air. Good luck on your search, Ben Bandu, sad little one. And the best of luck to you, April. Please, if, if you see my brother, tell him to come home. We're all so very worried. That's the the, the one of the magic people. Uh, why are you calling the bird? That's the one of the magic people that keep the the piece of the whatever. Hey Crow, would you mind doing me a favor? I was having this tete-a-tete -tete with a pretty young sparrow, but hey, Crow at your service. Did you say favor? Oh, sure thing. Unless it's something extremely... No, no, make that even remotely dangerous. I don't like dangerous. Not at all. Just scout out the forest from your vantage point. See if you can find Ben Bandu's brother. Ben who? Ben who? The mole I just met. I thought you were supposed to be watching me. Didn't you pay attention? No. Uh, <laughs> mole, you said. They're savages, a lot of them. You eat birds, even. Mm. Crow, I eat birds. You probably do, too. Hmm, yeah, I love a roasted duckling and a tangy orange. Oh, well, yeah, 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 I see your point. Oh, no. We're for a lost mole, then, are we? Yeah, and they're called the Banda. I never got into that whole PC thing. It's not Tyrox, it's the tyrant. Don't say chicks say birds. Don't say birds say women. I don't know. It's all a little too complicated for a simple man of the air like myself. Just go look for the lost mo the lost Bandu, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this uh, Bandu guys looks like these are one of the four magical people uh, who was given the piece of the key to the guardian realm. They seem and they shape their shape the soil under their feet. Okay, so the um, the riddles are not as hard as it turns out. We just need to meet more people here. The road continues on the other side. I really need to cross this gorge. The bridge is out! Damn! The bridge has been completely destroyed. The edges are charred. Whatever caused this, it couldn't have been flood water or simple wear and tear. I'll have to find some other way across. This gorge is too deep to cross and the river too fierce. Hmm. The road continues on the other side. I really need to cross this gorge. I can go off the road. The bridge has been completely destroyed. Huh. So we need to go back, I guess. Yeah, I don't see anything. Oh, hello. Who are you? It's a woman, I guess. An old woman, and it looks like she's in pain. Oh, please, pretty lady, pretty, please help me. I've fallen and I can't stand up. What happened to you? Oh, I was out picking bones, uh, berries, berries for my stew and flowers. Yes, pretty flowers. Then I tripped over a big old root and twisted my ankle. It hurts so. Please help me home, pretty lady, please. I don't like this. Who are you? Oh, I'm nobody, nobody at all. Just a frail old woman picking bones. Bones, bones. Berries, 
she's picking berries for her stew so she can feed her prisoner guests. Feed her guests and fatten them up for um, the long winter. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh... <laughs> Why do you keep swallowing your words? Why do you keep swallowing your words? Oh, because I'm just a frail, old, forgetful woman, yes. Yes. Uh, where, where do, do you, you live? live? I live not far from here, not far at all. No, help me home and I'll cook you a fine stew, I promise. Yes, I promise. Just help me home and I'll reward you for your compassion. Yes, you'll have your reward. Uh, this is 100% a trap. She has prisoners. <laughs> she cooks them stew with bones. Out of bones. Uh, uh, what should we do, chat? Do we help her? Or do we just go in our business. Even though I don't think we have anything else to do. Oh my god. <laughs> this is disturbing. Uh, but okay. Well, let's go. Alright, I'll help you home. Oh yes! Thanks, plump little Trish. A nice, pretty girl, thanks. Oh my god. Can we run away? She's fallen and she needs help getting up. Please, please, pretty please, help me home. Mm, I'm gonna regret this, but okay. Now what? Apparently, she needs help getting home. I still need your help, Plump Puddy, pretty girl. I can't walk all the way home by myself, you see. Help me home and I'll cook you. A good, thick, creamy stew. Yum, I'm getting hungry myself. Let's go. She's gonna cook uh, us <laughs> instead of the bones. Uh, uh, okay. Lead the way, ma'am. Yes. I should Let's have saved. Go. Come on, just follow me, my sweet mm. treat. Uh, can I save? Let's save. Oh my god. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <sighs> uh, okay, what do I have here? I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Oh no, the crow is not around. Mushrooms. Looks like a cozy little burrow. Like a hobbit hole. Hobbit hole. Uh, okay. Look like the edible sort. In fact, these mushrooms look cancerous and ugly. Mm. <laughs> Can you eat them? They look cancerous, and I'd rather not touch them. Okay, good. 
They look cancerous, and I'd rather not touch them. Just don't want to touch them, even. Okay. Uh, can we do something about the mushrooms? I don't think so. What else do we have? Don't think we have much. Guess let's go into the house. What is that? Come like? in, come in, honored guest. I'll just check on my stuffing. On my stew, yes. My thick, delicious stew. <laughs> Oh dear, what have we here? This stew isn't good enough to stuff. To serve a guest as plump, as well built and delicious, as honored as you, my dear. Why don't you just wait here and I will go pick some more berries and spices for my stuff. My stew. But wait, what about your bad back? And she totally ignores that. Can't do anything. What a strange. I mean, what a strange woman. There's something not quite right about this place. Oh, like wow. those skulls, for one. They look disturbingly humanoid. Oof. What's Oof. that sound? Where's it coming from? From there. Grotesque decor. Grotesque decor. It's a window, but it's too small for me to squeeze through. I can't climb up there. Besides, I'm too big to fit through that tiny window. What are those things? They look like... Is that blood? What does this creature do to people? Oof. Torture devices. Small skull. It's a small humanoid skull. Like that of a... a child. Good God! Oh no. Let's pick it up. Go faster, please. I wonder who this guy used to be back when he had a face. Wait, no, that's just too morbid. Okay. Grotesque decor. Grotesque decor. Grotesque decor. Decor, sure. Cabinet. Looks like a solid piece of furniture. It's got a chain tied around it. There's chain. that strange knocking sound again. Okay. It's locked solid. What was that? It sounds like somebody's trapped inside the cabinet. Okay. Anybody in there? Oh, please, let me out. Anybody in there? Oh, please, let me out. It's locked. Looks like a solid piece of furniture. It's got a chain tied around it. How do we get rid of the chain? Again, to even select it. Broom? It's a broom. By the looks of this place, I don't think it's been used much. It's Take too big it. for me to carry around. Oh. Maybe I could use it somewhere in this room. Oh. That's convenient. Oh dear me. Oh, hello. Who are you? Are you going to eat me? I'm April, and I've come to rescue you. Oh my, did my tribe send you? So to speak, I met your brother, Ben Bandu. Ben Bandu? Bandu Umanu Banta Orobana Biutan Dinoart? Yes. 
I think so. He said to call him Ben Bandu. Because he was sad for me? He will be so glad to find that you've rescued me then. Um, yeah. There could be a tiny little problem with that. Yeah, we're all gonna die. The Gribbler captured you too? Yeah. I guess she... it... whatever the Gribbler is did capture me. That took me by surprise since I did come here willingly. That's how she works, the Gribbler. She tricks Banda and humans to come here to her house, and then she cooks them and eats them. Friendly old lady, she's not. What's your name? Bandu utama tuta uyatan ayama binaort. That's a little difficult for me to remember. How about I call you Bandu Uta? Oh my, yes, yes, that would be fine. We have long names, us Banda, as long as our tunnels. You can tell me more about your people later. Right now we need to find a way out of here. Okay, we have some diary entry. I had my first encounter with Banda today. Banda today. Um, saying Mole Man is apparently like a racist ep epithet and a big no no with these people. Uh, his name was Ben Bandu. He was a really t sweet man or boy or whatever he was. I can't really tell. Uh, but he was sad. Uh, ben had lost his brother in the forest uh, and he was looking for him. I told him I'd keep my eyes open and I urged Crow to do some... to do the same. Oh my god. I hope he's alright because if he isn't, this forest is probably not such a friendly place after all. I've been tricked. I should have known something was wrong with that old woman. I mean, she was drooling and slobbering all over me. She kept tripping over her words and saying stuff like prisoners instead of guests. And her teeth were, were abnormal, um, abnormally large. Uh, but still, if you can't trust sweet old ladies who, who've, who've hurt their leg picking berries in the forest, who can you trust? Um, Hansel and Gretel, my heart goes out to you, kids. Uh, all kidding aside, however, we need to get the hell out of here before the birth, the, the bitch comes back. But how? Okay, uh, decor, decor, decor. I cannot pick any bones here. Table, broom. We still have broom. Or torture devices window can we pick it's a broom oh we can't use the broom anymore okay i guess that's done not so solid after all it's ben bandu's brother bandu uta oh dear whatever shall we do can i carry oh my god i can carry him into the window but okay, first, let's inspect this room a little bit. Oh. It's a loose floorboard. Take it. If I'm not careful, I could bring that pillar crashing down. Okay. That pillar looks a little shaky. It's kind of shaky, and I don't want to risk bringing the roof down on top of me. Hmm. It's a wooden table with a tablecloth made of some kind of animal skin. Or human skin, maybe. Something's cooking, all right. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. Or who? Doorway, maybe we can use that, but probably it's locked. April, stand aside, please. Wait, what? So when I move around that plank, it triggers a cutscene. 
Okay. That's a large fireplace and a fierce fire. Okay, let's go check out the door. The door's locked from the outside. Yeah. Wait a second. The door is locked? Oh my god, the door is locked. I'm trapped. No shit, the Sherlock. The door's locked from the outside. Okay. So Yeah, I guess the only thing we can do here is to throw this bandu into the window. Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear. Oh dear me. What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. Hold on. Can you break the window and get through? Oh dear, I'm so sorry, but it doesn't seem like I can do that. The window was too thick for me to break. Hmm. Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear, oh dear me. So we need to break the window somehow, but... What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. cannot use broom for that. Can you break the window and get through? Oh dear. I'm so sorry, but it doesn't seem like I can do that. The window was too thick for me to break. It's a window, but it's too small for me to squeeze through. I can't climb up there. Besides, I'm too big to fit through that tiny window. So we need to break the window. Can we put him here on this plank? No. Hmm. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Yeah, the bird is not very helpful for us here. Skull. Can we use skull to break the window? Nice. Nice. It's broken, but it's still too small for me to get through. Okay, let's get this guy. Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear. Oh dear me. What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. Hold on. What? <laughs> okay. Hey, wait a second. I need you to open the door for me. Don't run off. Damn. What an asshole. What the hell am I going to do now? I am back with the berries and... What's happened here? Why is the... Ew. Hello. Uh, what have you done, you... Stupid little human! I... I just saved an innocent person from being your dinner, Gribbler, so there! So... you think you could come into my house and... set my dinner free and get away with it? Uh... well... I will get away with it, because soon a lot of people, armed people, will come to get me and to kill you! So you'd better... you better run away while you still have a chance! I guess you will be my dinner tonight, then. And I had hoped to save you for tomorrow. Oh, come on, Gribbler. You can't honestly think you can eat... Step aside. I know karate. Beat it. Get out of here. 
Oh shit. <laughs> I look like it's a wooden table with a teeth. <laughs> Yes, I guessed correctly. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> uh, and I can't select it anymore. Come on, I want to take a look. <laughs> so that's it, I guess. I look like a serving maid. Okay, April, whatever. So, do we have anything here for us? Something's cooking, all right. Yeah, I don't think we can take anything from here. Maybe on the other side. Just double checking the core. Broom. Torture devices. I would like to take one of those torture devices. But okay, I guess this is it. Hi, Ben. Oh dear, oh dear. Where's the monster? She vanished like smoke up a chimney. Do you know what happened to your brother? He just ran off, didn't even stop to say goodbye. I, I met him back on the road. He was running like the wind. Said that when you helped him out of the window, he spotted the Gribbler returning, so he went to get help. Mm. I told him to alert the village, gather as many of the Banda as possible, and come back here. And that I'd try my best to aid you in the meanwhile. Thank, Thank you. you. That was very brave of you. Brave of me? Oh my. You defeated the Gribbler. You are a hero. I owe the life of my brother to you. The life of everyone in our tribe. I know my fellow Banda will want to reward you for your gracious deeds. You are invited to our village with me, and I will tell my people to prepare a grand feast for you. You don't have to do that, Ben. I just did what anybody would have done. But you did it. Give me your map, and I will show you where our village is. Then I must run ahead to tell the Banda that the Gribbler is no more. Banda Village. Okay. <clears throat> Monday late afternoon. Well, uh, what a day this has been. Um, I met a bunch of new people, including a couple of furry guys and a talking bird. Killed an old witch, freed a captured Bandu, and was invited to the Banda Village for a feast um, in my honor. Compare this to last week when the dramatic highlight of my day was getting sausage on my pizza instead of pepperoni. Uh, I feel so empowered and starving. <laughs> okay, uh, let's save real quick. Um. I guess we go to the Banda village. Just if we click here, we go back to the forest. I don't think we can do anything uh, there. And I don't think we have any anything left in this Gribbler house. So let's go, I guess. April! Oh, bird. I'm so glad you could come to our village and sit by our fire so we can thank you in the proper manner. It's my privilege, Ben Bandu. I wouldn't want to pass through this forest without visiting your village and seeing for myself how the Banda people live. Oh my, you speak so eloquently. My brother sits by the fire. I know he wishes to speak with you, but the elder would speak with you first. He rests in his hammock up on the mound. Go speak with him, and then come down again so we can celebrate the death of the Gribbler and the brave escape of April Ryan and Ben Bandu's brother. OK. 
Okay. Um, I need a couple of minutes. I need to take a short break. So I will be right back in a minute or two. I'm back. <clears throat> so, let's check out this village. Fire is glowing. We have Crow, but the okay, case crow him. It's a hammock built for a bondu. It's a hammock built for a bondu. Elder mole. Oh, so that's the hammock. Okay. So we need to speak to him, I guess. Wait, what? Oh, hammock. Into the forest. Mm. 
Ben Bandu. Ben Bandu's brother. You got a nice bonfire going. Yeah. Looks cozy. So, okay, let's. It's Ben Bandu. It's Ben Bandu's brother, Bandu Uta. Let's talk to him. Oh my, we would be honored to have you sit next to us, but the elder does insist that you speak with him first. He would like to thank you in person. Yeah, 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 we'll do that in a moment. Oh my, we would be honored to have you sit next to us, but the elder does insist that you speak with him first. He would like to thank you in person. It's Crow. When did he get here? It's the elder Bondo. The hero of the day comes to visit the old Bandu. <laughs> Let me see your face, human. Make yourself shorter. Make yourself shorter. <laughs> That's much better. The human is closer to the soil now, and she may even feel it like we do. Moving, shaping itself, breathing, beating. I don't feel anything. Sorry. So the human is not a digger. But we don't judge her because of that. The human is a hero, she is. <laughs> don't call me that. I'm not a hero. I was just in the right place at the right time to help somebody out. She destroyed the evil that haunted our forest and rescued one of our little ones from the creatures of chaos. And so she is a hero. She's the one spoken of in our songs, is she not? Really? The one who will deliver us from an evil presence and who will go on to save the balance. You are she, are you not? Mm. I don't know. Well, we will see, we will see. You will sleep in our spirit dig tonight, and then tomorrow we will see. But now you must enjoy yourself. This feast is in your honor to show our appreciation for your college. Thank you. Go, eat and drink and dance, and then go to sleep in the spirit dig. We will talk tomorrow before you continue your journey. You are on a journey, are you not? A very long one, yeah. We are all on a journey, but yours is the most important one ever. So go. I will smoke my pipe and think on prophecies and songs. Go. It's the elder Bondu. Go. Enjoy the feast in your okay. honor. We will speak again in the morning after you spend a night in the spirit day. Yes, yes, in the morning. Okay, in the morning. So now let's see what Crow has to say. Crow? Oh, hey, uh, I was uh, wondering what happened to you. What happened to you? I thought you were supposed to help out in the search. I could have used some assistance this afternoon. Uh, yeah, but I did find some mal... some banda, didn't I? Just not the one we were looking for is all. And besides, I was beat! My wings can only carry me so far before I need a twig to rest on and a couple of juicy berries. Speaking of berries, did you taste the ones they got here? The word is yum. Big yum. I don't know what they soaked them in, but hoo-hoo, man! Well, at least you're okay. No, oh, sure. You know me. I could use a good flea plucking, though. Care to reward me for my diligence? Diligence? Ha! <laughs> I'm guessing I'll be plucking my own fleas tonight, then, and I'm okay with that. I'm blaming you if I wake up with a crick in the neck tomorrow, though. Crow seems to be enjoying the party. 
Enjoying yourself, Crow? It's a party. I'm the party bird. Bird's what do you bird. think? Bird the bird. Okay. Uh, let's go, Tuck. Like a serving maid. Let's go, Tuck, to Ben Bando. Oh dear, it's April. Sit, sit down. Are you feeling all right? I thought you disappeared on me back at the Gribbler's lair. Oh dear, I do apologize. I saw the Gribbler return from the forest, so I ran into the bushes and headed straight for the village. I was going to get help, you understand, but then I bumped into my brother and I told him what was happening. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks to you, April. How did you kill the Gribbler? Lots of luck and a little bit of quick thinking. My limited talents in the martial arts were woefully underused. Were you frightened? I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my entire life. Kind of exhilarating, actually. Although at this point, I think I've had quite enough excitement for a lifetime. Oh, dear me. I could never be as brave as you, April. Ever. What is the spirit dig the Elder told me about? Oh, it's a sacred place. A very sacred place. It's where we, the Banda, can speak with our ancestors, ask them questions, and learn from their wisdom. Yeah, well, the Elder said I was to sleep there tonight. He did? The Elder said that? Then you have been honored by him, April. Only those worthy of the spirits of our ancestors can spend the night in the spirit dig. Okay. Where is the spirit dig? Right behind you, at the far end of our green. Where did you say the spirit dig was again? Right behind you, April. The entrance faces our green. Enjoy the party, guys. Oh, but it's in your honor, April. You must enjoy it yourself, too. So am I supposed to go to there now, or what? Is that the one? Or is that the one? Oh, spirit dig now, I can see it, okay. Dear, it's April. Sit, sit down. Uh, no, 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 no. Crap. Hi, guys. Are you enjoying the feast? Oh, very much, very much. Enjoy the party, guys. Okay. Oh, but it's in your honor, April. You must enjoy it yourself too. Can I go back to the forest? I won't be able to find my way through the forest when it's this dark. Yeah. Okay, then I guess we go into the spirit dig or whatever it is. Don't see any don't see anything else. So let's go. Mushroom. Oh, so they get hands. There are tunnels rooms. extending down into the earth behind the screen. Okay. Mushrooms or chairs or both? Edible chairs? It's not a big fire, but it's comfortably warm in here, and the smoke has a very pleasant, very mellow texture to it. Yeah, it looks cozy. Exit. What am I supposed to do here? Pray the match. Oh, bed. Yeah, I guess I have to sleep here. Don't see anything else. It's some kind of bed made with twigs and moss. Not as comfortable as a real mattress, I'm sure, but it'll do. 
Go to sleep, don't go to sleep. I'll just lie down for a few. Where? No, screw that. I'm getting a good night's sleep. That's what <laughs> I'm doing. I've never been this tired in my life. Yeah, you deserve some sleep, April. We're gonna speak with to, to some ancestors, I guess. <laughs> Why don't you just wait properly? Okay. What the hell do you think you're doing? What? What are you doing here, you arrogant bitch? You don't think you can really save the world, do you? Who are you? I don't tell me you don't recognize me, April Ryan. I'm you. That's impossible. This is just another dream. I must be dreaming. Think again, loser. This is as real as it gets. Why are you here? I'm sending you home, that's what. You're a sad little twit, don't you realize that? There's no point subjecting the entire world, two worlds, to your feeble attempts at redeeming yourself, is there? Go away, leave me alone. How the hell am I supposed to do that, Einstein? I am you. You are me. Unfortunately for the both of us, we're inseparable. I don't need this Freudian id crap. Not now. There's so much I have to do, so many people I have to help. Oh yeah? Like you really believe that? Like you give a shit about those people? You're doing this for yourself, April, and that's why you're gonna fail. Shut up! Yeah, shut up. Shut up! That's always your way out, isn't it? Telling people to shut up when they speak the truth and shutting them out when they're getting too close for comfort. Hey, don't tell me. I do it because daddy hurt me. Screw that. How do you think you're gonna hold up when this job gets tough if you can't rely on anybody or believe in anything? I'm doing it, aren't I? Yeah, because what kind of choice did you have? Face your problems back home? Face the nightmares? I don't think so. So you run. And you think you're putting distance between yourself and your fear of the past and the present? All you're doing is running straight into an inevitable nervous breakdown. Like right now. You're talking to yourself, April. Now that's not something a mentally stable person would do, is it? Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! It's okay, April. It's okay. Charlie? Charlie, is that you? Shh. Don't you worry. I'm here. I'll take good care of you. Oh, God, Charlie. I'm so glad that... that you're... You're... You're not here. You can't be. I'm still dreaming. No, no. You're not dreaming. I'm here, but in spirit only. Is it? Is it really you, Charlie? We are Charlie, your friend. We feel his heart and his mind, and his sleeping spirit joins us. But we speak from the great digs of the beyond, where the songs of the banda never end. What? Dead? We have passed into the soil. We are spirits, and we have come to guide you. Why Charlie? Why do you show me Charlie? He loves you. And so he guides us here. Into your heart and mind. He loves me? Charlie loves me? You are not alone in the world, April. There are many who care for you. Your friends and your family. Your real family. You are not alone in your journey through life. What do you know about my family? My real family. They watch out for you, April. That's all we know. They have never abandoned you. They have just let you live the life you needed to live. 
to understand. It's important that you understand. Understand what? That life, even when difficult and painful, is a gift. That love is priceless and rare and precious. That every good action, every good thought counts. And that a single person can make a difference, can change the world. If she puts her mind to it, if she believes in herself, and the people who believe in her. But everything is so frightening. I don't understand half of what goes on around me. Did not the mother say she would help you? Watch out for you? Did not Charlie and Emma, your friends, offer to give you a helping hand when you didn't even tell them the truth about what was going on? And Cortez the Red, did he not prove himself a friend as well? The Red? How then can you be so afraid when you have so many spirits to be with you in your darkest hour? Cortez the Red? Please, tell me what I have to do. I'm just fumbling in the dark here. Follow your heart and your spirit, April, and use your mind. These are your weapons, and with them you will defeat chaos. When you wake, tell the Elder that you've had a Bakbar, that you've spoken with the band of spirits, and that your name amongst our people is now April Bandu and Bata. April Digger who will seek and find. Bandu and Bata. Oh, don't go, please don't go. <laughs> She's up. Okay. Chapter 5 Okay, that was interesting. Um Tuesday morning. I guess I had what you call a spiritual awakening last night, or at least a visit from the spirit world, whatever that is. Um, either that or an incredibly vivid dream, but I'm betting that's not it. Say hello to the ghost of Christmas future, April. Um, Staring yourself in the eye and realizing you're a complete bitch is not an occasion uh, to be celebrated. Okay, so she wasn't really me, but she, but the things she said have all crossed my mind from time to time, especially lately. As for Charlie, does he really, really love me? I mean, like, love, love me. I have no idea. No, that's a lie. I guess I had some idea, but I didn't really want to deal with it because I just don't feel that way about him. Uh, he's sweet and kind, and I simply have a tender I simply have a tendency to fall in love with the wrong guys uh, for for the wrong reasons, like now. Uh, I like with oh no, I'm not even gonna think about that. Wait, what? Like now, like with who is she, who is who is she thinking about? I should probably go see the elder. Simply have a ten tendency to fall in love with the wrong guys for the wrong reasons. Like now, like with oh no. I'm not even gonna think about that. Is she, is she thinking about Cortez? I should probably go see the elder. Okay. Um, guess nothing you hear. Oh. She's awake. April! The bird is sleeping. Good morning, Ben Bondu. Greetings of the new day to you, April. 
Did you sleep well in the spirit, Dig? Did I sleep well? Aside from the voices, the apparitions, the sharp rocks poking me in the back. So you were visited by the spirits? Sorry, accidentally. Yes. When you told me last night that I would be, I didn't believe you. I thought it was just a manner of speaking, like saying, don't let the bed bugs bite. Our ancestors are close to us at all times. Once in a while, they speak to those who have been chosen to spend a night in the spirit dig. That they spoke to you is a great honor. April, a great honor. Right now, I'd be happy to exchange all the honor in the world for one decent night's sleep. <laughs> oh, dear me. You are very funny, April. If all humans are as funny as you, your cities must be filled with laughter. The Elder wishes to speak with you again. And I must sing now, down in the tunnels. It was decided this morning that I was finally ready to join the diggers. I'm happy for you, Ben Bondu. Yeah, Thank good you. for you. May the balance provide you on your journey, April. You will be in my heart always. And you will be in mine, Ben Bondu, always. You will come back when your journey is over. I'll try. Goodbye. Oh, my. I cannot stand farewells. But farewell. It's Ben Bondu. Okay. That was weird. Yeah, sorry, I accidentally pressed something on the second keyboard. So, yeah. Uh... Ashes. It's the entrance to the spirit dig. Okay, what else do I have? I have the crow, but screw him. Let's go talk to the elder. It's the elder Bondu. So, you are awake? Did you sleep well? As well as can be expected, I guess. Does the word Buckbar mean anything to you? Buckbar? Where did you hear this word? I heard it in a dream. Dreams are not just dreams in the spirit dig, human. Dreams have a presence there. And the spirits use dreams to guide us. A bakbar is a vision of yourself that speaks the truth in two ways. One is the dark truth. This is how you see yourself when you are not sure of yourself or angry with yourself. Mm -hmm. The other truth is the very opposite of the first. This is how you must see yourself to be happy. But the spirits remind us that both are important. That you cannot love yourself without first seeing your flaws. The people I saw, were they really there? The spirits use masks to convey their messages. And they speak in voices from the past or the present that carry great weight with you. The messengers are never the same, nor the message. But you must take care to hear and heed their words. I was told that my name among the Banda would be April Bandu Mbata. She among the little ones who seeks and finds. So, you are the one we sing of. The human who would come to aid us and to save our world. And who will then tear it apart. What? You bring tidings both happy and sad to the Banda, April Bandu and Bata, both hope and despair. This world will never be the same again once you have passed through it. But we are grateful, and I'm proud to have met you and to give you what you came for. It was just luck that brought me here. I didn't come for anything in specific. Yes, you did. This is what you came for. A piece of the of the disc. What is it? This is the stone given to us by the fathers to keep safe until this day. 
It has been with us for so long. Oh, it's a piece of the disc. Yeah. Then you know it. You came for the stone, even though you didn't know it until now? I guess I did. Thanks. Now, you must continue your journey, April Bandu and Bata. Remember that this is your tribe now. And so you are welcome at our fires and in our digs whenever you come this way again. I'm honored. Thank you. May there always be soil between your toes, April Bandu and Bata. No, and between you. yours, Elder. Goodbye. So between your toes. I want that, that swing too. Yeah, yeah. Looks comfy. It's the elder Bondu. Okay. Bird. He's sleeping. He's not allowed. Wake up! Yeah, wake up. Huh? Turn off the big light, mommy. <laughs> It's called the sun, Crow. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. <sighs> I was having this weird dream about a big-ass turkey wearing a pair of red shoes. And you were there. And, and he was there. And, and, and maybe it wasn't a dream after all. I think it's safe to say that you need therapy. And we need to leave right now. We do? We do! Let's go get him! <clears throat> uh... Who are we getting again? <laughs> Some evil alchemist out to rule the world with his powerful and destructive magic. Oh, yeah, right. Yes! Exactly! Uh, I'll keep an eye out for other potential threats then, shall I? Like, uh, marauding mice? Marauding mice? You do that, Crow. Thank you. Okay. Now he goes. Alright. Uh, do we... Do we have anything else here? No, I don't think so. So back to the forest. Wait, he gave us this thing? It's a piece of the stone disc I got from the Banda people. Okay. Uh, and yeah, this is it, I guess. I want to read the book again. So yeah, I did understood when I saw them that this is... I look like a serving maid. Yes, you are, April. So the, the, this is the one of the four magical people that will give us the piece of the disc. But okay. I got the first stone. It's funny, I came here by chance and I didn't even know the banda were guarding one of the pieces of the disc. Yet here it is, right in my hand. Um, it's a lot smaller than I thought, which is a good thing, considering I'll be carrying it with me for a while. Um, it is not so hard, is it? I'm actually starting to enjoy myself. Of course, having said that, everything will probably grow in from now on. Eh? Uh, hello, Echeladon. How are you doing? Three more stones and I'm home. I, three more stones and I'm home free. After I defeat the evil alchemist, of course, and all the forces of chaos at the bay. And oh boy, I really got to keep a passive attitude here. Positive attitude here. Okay. Um. So yeah, I guess we go to the alchemist, to the swamp. That's new. Okay, working. Want some sleep? Well, do, do you have like, have you messed up your sleeping schedule? Because that's not a good thing. Out on bridge. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes everywhere. I hope one of those clouds doesn't get a whiff of me in charge. The last thing I need now is malaria. Okay, mosquitoes. Water. 
Swamp water. There are things moving down there. Big things. Can read my schedule. Yeah. Feel ya. Swamp water. Okay, I guess nothing here. We can go there if I can reach that place. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, to, oh okay. There's an ordeal I prefer not to go through again. Did I drop something? It feels like I dropped something. No. Whatever it was, one of those things probably ate it. Uh, what did it drop, April? Wait, what did she drop? There's one less item. What did she drop? Uh... Why did she drop? We have the stone. There is something after this flute. That we are missing now. What was it? Oh my god, what was it? <gasps> oh no! We dropped the letter um, for our delivery quest. Oh no. Yeah, we had the letter that we need to deliver this map. It's a map of the Northlands. To the navigator girl. We don't have that anymore. Huh, interesting. I spent half the day crossing that damn swamp, and I have no intention of going back that way until I have to. Okay, so it's gone. I guess. Where does this lead? Up, up the hill. Huh? Purple flowers. They look like dark purple tulips with a satin texture. Pretty, but a little too gothic for my taste. It's like, where's the funeral? Don't tell me they're gonna talk. They feel very soft to the touch and soothing like skin moisturizer. I'll bring a few in case my hands get dry. Never hurts to be prepared for a dry skin emergency. Pretty, but a little too dark and gothic for me. Okay, moisturizing flower. A soft purple moisturizing flower. Looks like there is a bird in it, but okay. Guess we will need that later. What is that? That must be Roper Clax's castle. The whole gravity-defying bit kind of gives it away. Yeah. To swamp land, down the plains. Uh, what? Nice stonework, but not particularly realistic. Don't want to touch that for now. We have some kind of bush. Those berries look ripe and juicy, but my mom taught me never to judge a book by its cover. They're probably poisonous and almost certainly fattening. Uh-oh, I'm sinking! No. That was a bit scary. I could have lost my shoes! And I guess my life. And I guess my life. Ok. 
Okay, so we can't cross that. Hmm. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Okay. Those berries look ripe and juicy. Nah, -uh, that marshy ground between me and the berries looks treacherous. I'll probably get stuck and drown. So I need to somehow cross this marshland, get the berries. I guess. Hmm. Don't think I have anything, but all right. So let's go check out the statue again. Let's touch it. Strange texture. My fingers feel tingly. Oh. oh my god. What are you? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you try to open your mouth a bit? I <laughs> guess I can. Possible? Okay. Okay, there's gotta be some way to help you talk. By the way, can you help me get up there? Into the castle? Yes. I don't know any magic, sorry. But I'll try to find a way to soften you up. Oh. We have the moisturizing flower. He's been petrified by magic. Hello again? Yes. Um, so you can't help me get into the castle unless I help you soften up a bit first, yes? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay, so we have... Wait. All right, yeah, we have this flower. That doesn't work. The stone surface is too coarse and the petals aren't moist enough by themselves. I think I need to mix them with something to make it easier to apply. With berries? How do we cross there? Those berries look ripe and juicy. Nope, the marshland's too dangerous to be wandering around in. Hmm. We need the bird to pick the berries. Maybe. Oh, here he goes, okay. here you should really be wearing a sweater doll you don't want to catch a cold not with the fate of the known cosmos on your shoulders i'm fine thanks crow what's going on with you keeping my eyes open you know floating on the warm winds doing that whole hawkeye shtick i'm getting pretty good at it too i spotted you from at least 100 yards away impressive yep they don't call me <laughs> the lord of the winds for nothing. <laughs> Do they really wind. call you that? No, but soon, by the balance, they will. Now, what can I do for you, sweetheart? Wait, let me talk to you. It's Crow. What can I do you for? Okay. So we need to take the bird. <laughs> Crow, I need berries. you to fly over there and get some of those berries for me. And Crow? Yes, ma'am. Don't eat the berries. No, ma'am. Okay. Thanks, Crow. 
you got it. I'm gonna go back up there and work on my eyesight. I ain't stopping until I can spot those cute chicks from miles and miles away. Okay, thank you, Crow. Okay. So we have berries. I got a few of these ripe and sticky berries, but I don't want to carry them with me for much longer. The juice is coloring my pants. We can eat those. Let's save just for just in case. I'm not particularly hungry. Okay. So let's mix the berries with this fruit. Okay, moisturize and cream. And apply this to the statue. I don't need your stinking money. Uh. There. You feel better? Softer. Softer. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't think the salve will be effective for very long. I'm April, by the way. One second. Lorhan, I'm a sailor. And you've got to help me get out of here. I don't think I can stand it much longer. Uh. Nicoladon, thank you a lot for buying fluffies on uh, Buy Me a Coffee. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm Doug Yurt. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh my god, I can't use this keyboard. Yeah. Thank you. Um Yeah. That was nice of you. Um so No, thank you. <laughs> uh, so let's see what can we do with this guy now. What happened to you? Oh, that blasted, blasted alchemist cast a spell on me, turned me to solid rock. Then he put me here to be gatekeeper and anchor for his blasted castle. That was near six full moons past now. You've been here for half a year. Curse the balance. When you say it like that, it is an age. My wife is sure to have taken someone else's bed by now. Blasted magic, the vanguard were right. One sec, uh, I can't use the menu, okay. What do you mean the vanguard were right? That we've been at the mercy of the balance for too long. It's time to make some changes, put the control back into the hands of the people. How would that have helped you? Well, for one, there wouldn't be any rogue magicians like this Roper clacks running about causing trouble. Do you not agree? I'm not about to argue politics with you right now, Lorhan. I'm in a hurry. Who's arguing? And blasted be my rocky hide. Get me out of here. How can I help you? It ain't just me, April. There are dozens of men up there. Servants and sailors and merchants and soldiers. All sent here by their masters to deal with Roper clacks. Ha! <laughs> Cursed be the balance. We've all been turned to stone, and our souls trapped in a crystal that the madman keeps in his tower. He draws power from that, power that shouldn't be his by right. But this blasted problem of the balance has upset the natural order of things. If the vanguard were in control, this would never have happened. Things would be like they used to be a long time ago. Everything was good then? Oh, sure, there were problems, but this rift? It ain't natural. Science and magic belong together, in the hands of the people. Not to some naked guardian fellow on a tower somewhere far away. Listen, we've got more important things to think about, like how I'm going to get inside the mountain, beat this clock sky, and free your soul. Yeah, 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 you're right. And I can feel my muscles turning to stone again. We must hurry. How do I get inside the mountain? I'll pull the stairs down for you. Usually when Clax comes and goes, he softens me up for a bit, just so I can raise and lower the stairs for him, and then he changes me back to solid rock again. Once you're inside, and if you manage to defeat the madman, and I don't see how you're gonna do that, a young woman like yourself. I'm pretty resourceful, and I'm not your run-of-the-mill teeny bopper either. You're what? Anyways, if you defeat Clax, you must find his study and break the crystal, the soul stone. 
That should break the spell and give us back our flesh and bone bodies. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So we need to break the crystal. All right, here goes. Watch your head, April. Okay. What do we have in the diary? Tuesday afternoon, August 1st. Having spent most of the day traversing a horrid swamp filled with foul odors, uh, hungry tentacled thingies, and tons of sticky stuff, I finally arrive at the foot of the Rupert Clark's. Um, Rupert Clark's uh, castle late in the afternoon. Uh, the guys got like the most amazing mansion and it levitates too. Um, if it weren't for this petrified guy, Lorhan, um, it would just fly off. It would just fly off into the clouds. So Lorhan tells me that Rupert Clark uh, has trapped a lot of people in his castle that he keeps uh, their souls in his so-called soul stone. Very original, typical evil magic guy stuff. If I manage to break the soul stone, everybody will be turned back into soft and flexible humans or whatever they were to begin with. Again, with the saving people thing. Um, is this gonna be a habit or what? Okay. Um... We can't speak to him anymore, so I guess we just go into the mountain. A labyrinth, great. I so love these things. Jump! Jump into the abyss! Who is that? Wait, don't tell me, evil wizard. They all sound like Richard III on crack. He's got his hand out like he's begging. Okay, so I guess we need to put something into his hand. Hourglass? That gargoyle's holding a large hourglass. Why can't I click the mirror? It's a rolled up parchment. Huh, we can't go there. Rolled up, it's parchment. A rolled up parchment. Door. Can't use that. So I guess we need to somehow... Somehow go there. Go, 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 go. <laughs> this guy is really enjoying himself. But okay, we need to go fast, and the April is not a very fast one. But okay. Okay, we made it. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Okay. It's a mirror door. Mirror door. I look different in that mirror. Darker, scowling, scarred. Must be the light. about 
hissy fit. Evil Mirror Universe it sure got some anger stored up. Guess she doesn't want me to get that parchment. Okay, so we can't get this parchment. I don't know what it is. Uh, because Evil April is guarding that. Can we bribe the Evil April? No. Uh, photograph? Maybe? No. I don't know. Door. It's a stone door. Who's knocking? That? that door's got an hourglass sticking out of it. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Probably that was not really a good idea. There was some kind of mess that they didn't investigate, but okay. Serving maid. Don't think it can go anywhere from here. There's nothing really here. Okay, so this is, I guess, how he presents himself. Oh. And we are at the beginning. How the heck did I end up here? I didn't walk. Oh, forget it. Magic. Again. Nah, nah, nah. Okay. So this girl goes. He's got his hand out like he's begging. Begging. Can we give him some money? Yes. Bah, his hand's on fire. <laughs> huh. His hands on fire. <laughs> How can we go there? Ah, uh. gargoyle. Now there is a gargoyle there. Okay, I see. Wait, there was a mist. Ah, okay. So now instead of the mist, we have a door. No, oh, no, there, there is the mist. Okay, so now we need to go down there. Can we get the parchment? It's like that Star Trek episode with the Mirror Universe Spock. It almost looks like a Mirror Universe me. Mirror Universe me. It's like me. that Star Trek episode with the Mirror Universe Spock. It almost looks like a Mirror Universe me. Mm. 
Can I give the diary to the thing? No. A ring? No. I have no idea. It's a rolled up parchment. Think I nah, need to I don't trust my mirror image. She's a bad girl. Hmm. How can I break the mirror? Don't want to use this one, but let's see, does it do anything? No. So to get this parchment we need to somehow either break the mirror or do something about the reflection. I would have guessed that we need to use the, the photograph. No, maybe not. Let's try again and see what. Oh. Nah, I don't trust my mirror image. She's a bad girl. Okay, so she's a bad girl. We have this mist. Let's go check out that mist. Ouch! God, this is just a painting of a staircase. Not fair. Now I understand how Wily e. Coyote felt. That damn bird. Okay, so this is. <laughs> so this is a painting. Hmm. But okay, we we unlocked this door. So if we go there, we should end up near the door. Let's see what happens. My God, why is it so slow, April? Face. Wait. That's one stony face. Does it need money as well? No, no. Face. Is it also timed or what? No, it's still glowing. This place is confusing. <laughs> we still can give him give the, the statue some money. <laughs> Salt paper. It's a salt shaker. It's a pepper shaker. Pepper. Oops. Oh my god, can I select it? Oh, I right click on it. Salt. Paper and salt, huh? Can I blow the candles out? No.
So I think we are done with this gargoyle, it's just we needed to interact with it twice. Also, we have only a single coin left. It's a single iron coin. Oh no, we've spent everything. Okay. Can we use salt? Salt. On that mirror. No. Paper? Pepper? No. Hmm. What can we do about the mirror? Coin? No. Sticky candy? Just candy? No. Interesting. Bird? I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Nah, I don't trust my mirror image. She's a bad girl. Mm, what can I do about the mirror? Throw this thing into the mirror? No. Can we combine salt and pepper? No. Yeah, I don't think we can do anything, at least for now. <laughs> Why are you so slow, April? Why did you stop there? Okay, I'm trying to investigate what else we have. So, blowing those first candles and up bringing this stone face. Go, 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 then stop. Okay, good. <laughs> Balance be cast! Okay, so we have salt, we have pepper. Can we That's give that... stony face. Can we give... Salt? No. Can we give it the pepper? Oops. Yes. A chip? Kills bells. <laughs> okay. Um But we need to remember that we still need to take that parchment. And I'm pretty sure I am supposed to figure out how to do that right now. Where is the salt? The salt is gone. Interesting. But yeah, we can get back to the labyrinth, I think. 
Evil alchemist or not, at least he's made some effort to make the place look good. Big, certainly, but I can't see anything through it. It's like there's a thick fog outside obscuring everything. Evil alchemist or not, at least he's made some effort. Say whatever you want about Roper Clax, he certainly knows how to keep a big fire. Oh, wait. Are those human bones down there? Okay. With a tower. Okay, let's go to the tower. Finally! <laughs> I was beginning to think you would never make it through my labyrinth. Welcome to my humble home. Do you like it? I had it built according to my own specifications by the most skilled architects of Arcadia. They have since become a permanent and quite attractive fixture of their own building, of course. Dude, you're sick. Oh, but I forget my manners. I am, as I am sure you already know, Roper Clax. And you would be? Well, I have three choices. Relinquish your prisoners and free the wind. Never you mind who I am. In April, Ryan, pleased to meet you, sir. I guess let's try to start on a nice note. April, Ryan, pleased to meet you, sir. Oh. But the kitten has manners. How precious. How very precious. I am tempted to not turn you into stone. You would make a spirited wife and mother to my demonic children. Dude. But no. <laughs> demonic children. It will be more fun to destroy you. Get a girl, see you later, and you run away. Okay, um... Yeah, why does it trap the why wind? Why did you trap the wind? Why does the wolf eat the sheep? I don't think you answered my question. Because I can, little girl, because I can. And because of who I am, because I am hungry, and because the time is right. I think you did it because you're insecure and you have to show off your petty magic to the world. Shut your pretty little mouth. I will devour you. I will... <clears throat> but we must not lose our self-control, must we? No, we must not. Why did you turn those people into stone? Questions, questions, questions! I do not need to explain myself to you, little bastard child! Do you know who your parents are? No, of course not! Too stupid! What? What do you know about my parents? Suffer the little children. Oh, how I love that phrase. It is my life's philosophy. I like suffering, especially the suffering of innocent children. Their screams are so pretty, their tears so salty. You're a real shit, Clax. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> okay. Prepare to be defeated there. Got to go. See you later. Uh, Prepare to be defeated. Prepare to be defeated. Pa! Clichés! Is that the best you can do? Watch me. Yes. And you plan to do what? Witness the men who came before you with their weapons and their magic. Look what happened to them. Turn to stone. Each and every one of them for all eternity. 
I even own their souls now, and they will feed me and keep me strong for as long as I need them. How original. Been reading a lot of fairy tales lately, have we? Oh, how precious. <laughs> See? I could scour your flesh off your bones in a second, little girl. Now, do you think you could defeat me? How about a proper challenge? A proper... <clears throat> What, what do you mean by a proper challenge? I can't defeat you with magic. I'm not a wizard. Wizards? Frauds! The lot of them! The only real magic is the magic of alchemy. But of course, you cannot defeat me with magic. That is why I will win. What's so great about beating me with magic? That's not a challenge. That's a walkover. If we even the odds out a bit, You'll have more fun and satisfaction from turning me into stone later. You are trying to trick me, I know that. But you intrigue me, little girl. Go on then, issue a challenge worthy of my powers. Can you calculate some stuff? It's Roper Clax, your basic evil wizard and bad dresser. Challenge you to a game of hopscotch, to a round of tic-tac-toe, to a spelling bee, to guess my weight, to retrieve him... to retrieve him... Oh my god, to recite a monologue from Shakespeare's Macbeth um, to a cooking contest Give me a moment, I will think of a better challenge uh, Well, let's try them all I challenge you to a game of hopscotch Do not underestimate me, little girl I was young once too, believe it or not and I was the neighborhood champion in hopscotch three years running. Um, okay, let's rock and roll. <laughs> oh my god. Fine, you win. Okay. <laughs> that was interesting. I challenge you to a round of tic tac toe. No. Ah. <laughs> Did I forget to mention that back at the Alchemist's Academy, I was a faithful member of the Tic-Tac-Toe Club for five years? Oh, really? <laughs> this guy just wanted some... Uh, companionship, some friends to play <laughs> tic tac toe with. Guess if he didn't turn all of them into stone, it would be more interesting for him to live. Fine, you win. Okay. <laughs> spelling bee. I challenge you to a spelling bee. Ha! Spelling. My secret peckham. All right. <clears throat> you begin. Give it to me. 
Um, sure, okay. Um, spell? Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, as in a body of non-elective government officials, Bureaucracy, B-U-R-E-A-U-C-R-A-C-Y, Bureaucracy. Okay. Now it's your turn. Spell... Anzebequakalia. Answer what? That's not a real word. It is. It is a terminology often used in the study of the black art of alchemy. Now spell it. A N S Oh, forget it. Okay. But yeah, he definitely enjoys playing with us. Guess my weight. I challenge you to guess my weight. One hundred and eighteen pounds. Damn. Okay. I challenge you to recite a monologue from Shakespeare's Macbeth. <coughs> if it were done, when it is done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could tremble up the consequence and catch with his surcease, success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all. All right, all right already. <laughs> okay. I challenge you to a cooking contest. Ah, cooking. My secret passion. You have not lived until you have tasted my mince pie. Oh, brother. Forget cooking. I suck at cooking anyway. Okay. Give me a moment, and I'll think of a better challenge. A moment is all you get, little girl. So we need to give him something, I guess. Calculator. That was my initial idea. I challenge you to a contest of simple arithmetic using only this petty little device against your supreme intellectual powers. Give me your best shot, but after this, I will take your soul and trap you in stone for all eternity. Sounds good to me. Okay, here's one. 49 times 11. 49 times 11 what? Numbers. Okay, think of apples and oranges. 49 apples times 11 oranges. 49 times 11. Let's see. Carry the one over to three. What to do with that file? <clears throat> no, forget that one. So that leaves us with nine. Aha! <laughs> Wrong. It's five hundred and thirty-nine. That was an easy one, Clax. Is that the best you can do? Uh, two out of three. I'll give you an even easier one this time. 603 divided by 3. Ooh, you underestimate my powers, little girl. 5,867.2.3. Aha! That's stupid. Way off, buddy. It's 201. Sorry, you lose. Give me that thing! Ooh, this is intriguing. This really is. What does this do? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
He's found a new best toy for himself. Oh no. Wait, what? 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 Uh, and what? <laughs> and I always thought math was such a waste of time. Uh, okay. How did we trap an alchemist in a calculator? Guess he's now in Stark. I don't know. Okay, let's go to the tower. That was weird. Uh, what? Skull. It's a big old skull with a weird blue light inside. It's a bottle containing a blue liquid. Take it. Cauldron. Oh no, we have a puzzle here. It's a tap used for emptying the contents of the pot into a container. It's a big cast iron pot simmering over a slow fire. It's a bottle containing a yellow liquid. Take it. No, we we will have Empty to. Vials. We will have to um, do some mixing here. Empty vials. Big book. Oh no. This page has been torn out, leaving only part of it readable. If you bother to tear it out, it must be important. Okay. It's a spell. Clouds and spider's webs, plus, um, magic finger? If alchemy is anything like chemistry, that last one is probably some kind of catalyst or something. Clouds and spider web plus catalyst makes invisible. All right, then. okay, invisible, <gasps> invisible. So we can become invisible to get that parchment. Probably this is the missing page. Guess yeah. Then we're not gonna be visible in the in the mirror. Only part of this page is readable. Okay, curtain. These curtains haven't been washed in years. Typical. Evil alchemists spend too much time mixing potions and coming up with megalomaniacal schemes and not enough time doing basic household chores. Crystal. It's a crystal ball with tiny specks of light flitting back and forth inside. This must be where Clax has trapped the souls of all those unfortunate people. Break. It's a crystal ball with souls trapped inside it. It's a crystal ball with souls trapped inside it. Okay. It's a bottle containing a red liquid. I can't reach that high. There's something behind the curtain. Clever fellow, that roper clacks. Who'd think to look there? What do you have there? Vial. It's a bottle containing a green liquid. So I have a blue essence. What? Touch, smell, listen. Cycle forward. Ah.
It feels soft like satin and very fragile. It sounds like the rapid flapping of fragile wings. <laughs> it smells like fresh flowers. It feels soft like satin and very fragile. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna deal with that later. Let's investigate the room a little bit more. That's downstairs. Book. Window. The window's closed, and the glass is too foggy to see through. Can you break it or open it? Can't. Okay. No, no, no. Keep it open. I don't know how high up we are, but there are clouds below us and I can't see the ground. Can we call the bird? Yes. Okay. What's going on? Nice digs you found here, though I'd cut down on the mad alchemist decor just a little. It's just not you. I don't plan on sticking around, Crow. Heck, why not? You'll be mobile. Home security is not an issue, and you can strike fear into the hearts of men. When you put it like that, no. <laughs> hey, up to you. So, why'd you call me? What's going on out there? What's going on is that we're currently cruising at an altitude of, uh, oh, very high. And where are we heading? We're very slowly going nowhere except up. There's no wind, remember? It'll start getting chilly and hard to breathe in a few hours, however. That won't be very pleasant. Oh, no. I could use some help. I'll try my best. Just let me know what you want me to do. Can you give me that vial? Think you can get that red flask for me, Crow? Unless you want me to knock it down for you? No way. It's too large and unhandy for my claws. Oh no. Please? No. Crow might drop and break the bottle. Uh Need some fresh air, Crow? Go on. Go for a walk. You kicking me out of here? I thought you needed my help. Yeah, I do. Sorry. Stick around. Crap. Yeah, I have no idea. It's a bottle containing a red liquid. So... How can we get it? I can't reach that high. Hmm. No. Crow might drop and break the bottle. So maybe we need to make something to catch that bottle with, I don't know. Wait, uh, can we ask Crow to just get 
a, a small piece of that. Empty vials. Can I take? Empty vi empty vials. An empty vial. Hmm. Okay, maybe later. Let, let's close the window. I don't like the noise. Does it change anything? No, I don't think so, no. but... Crow might drop and break the bottle. Okay, so let's take a look at, into the book again. So, clouds, spider web, catalyst. Clouds, spider web, catalyst. Uh, so, what's the blue one? Feels cool to the touch, like ice. Ice. I can hear a distant tingling sound like crystal bells. So this is an ice vial. The blue one is the ice. <laughs> it smells hard to define. Sharp, decisive, earthy. Okay, so that's ice. This yellow vial. It feels soft like satin and very fragile. Soft like satin and very fra fragile. It sounds like the rapid flapping of fragile wings. So this is probably the wind. <laughs> it smells like fresh flowers. But flowers? Okay, maybe yellow is the wind. It has the texture of thin strands of hair. Hair? Okay. I can hear the rustling of tiny legs. This is the spider. <laughs> it smells like pearls of morning dew. So green is the spider, yellow maybe the wind. Let's try to mix that. It's a tap used for emptying the con it's a big cast iron pot simmering over a slow fire. How do we use it? So yellow. Okay. Green. What's the catalyst? It's a tap used for emptying the contents of the pot into a container. Maybe this is the catalyst? Whoops, that didn't seem to mix too well. Mm. It's a tap used for emptying the contents of the pot into a container. Interesting. So yeah, this is the ice. Yellow essence looks like is the clouds. Green one is the spider. Clouds and spiders webs with catalyst makes invisibility spell. Clouds and spiders webs with catalyst makes invisibility spell. What is the catalyst? That the ring? And we get uh, the invisibility ring. No. 
now. Hmm. Interesting. How do we get the catalysts? Maybe red is the catalyst. Maybe that's just another ingredient for a later spell. have this crystal that we need to break have crow here vile I missed it's a that bottle one. containing white liquid okay I missed that one so that's maybe the the catalyst it feels moist and light fluffy almost Fluff. That's the, the clouds. It sounds like distant thunder. <laughs> it smells like ozone. So what is the yellow then? It feels soft like satin. And very fragile. Soft like satin and very fragile. This is wings. It sounds like the rapid flapping of fragile wings. <laughs> it smells like fresh flowers. So this is like butterfly wings. White is the clouds. And green is the spider legs. Let's try mixing those two. Maybe we don't need the catalyst. Oh yeah, we did Oops. have. That didn't seem to mix too well. We did have previous spell it's there. A big cast iron pot simmering over a slow fire. So clouds plus spider. Now oh, we need some catalyst. Well, let's try yellow again. No. Okay, let's Oops. try it with blue. That didn't seem to mix too well. So again, clouds. Spider. And ice. Here we go. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Okay. Like That's so. Potion. Fortunately, they're small enough to carry in my pocket. Okay. And we still have the vials. Good. It's a vial containing a magical essence that, with luck, will make me invisible. Nice. Invisible potion. Um. Uh, okay. Let's. Let's use it. Can I use it on crown? 
Okay, let's I'll see save it. it for when I really need it. I'll save it for when I really need it. But you, you do need it. Okay, let's go downstairs. To the labyrinth. Okay, at least we are here. So now we use this. Yes, now we can use it. I'm invisible. That's so cool. Nice. It's a mirror door. Yeah, now we take it. Good. We're still invisible. That's solid it. again. Oh. Good timing. I've got to hold on to this stuff. If nothing else, it's perfect for sneaking into clubs back home. Oh, so we have more. Nice, so we have an invisibility potion. Turn page. It's a page that's been torn out of a book. Okay, let's go from put the intricate it... intricate schizophrenic handwriting and the frighteningly detailed illustrations, I'd say it came from a spell book. I could be wrong, but no. Okay, uh, how do we get back? Can we go into the paint? And yeah, by the way, we still have the paint. And this is just a painting of a staircase. So I assume we somehow can turn it into like a real thing. Oh, to tower. Okay, so we can go back directly to the tower now. Nice, at least that's good. So now I have the missing page. Let's put it back. Can we? Well, no? It's the missing page from Roper Clax's big book of alchemy. Can I put it here? Yes. Nice. Butterfly wings with clouds makes leaf? Makes you light as a leaf, probably. Okay, let's do that. So butterfly wings, this, that's yellow and white and blue. Yellow, white, blue, yellow, white, blue. Uh, yellow. White. And blue. Nice. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Lift. Lightest leaf posh. It's a vial containing a magical essence that's supposed to take off those few extra pounds in a jiffy. Those few extra pounds meaning, of course, everything. Okay. Let's take a look into the book. Clouds with brimstone makes storm. Storm? I can bring the wind back with this potion. Okay. Brimstone. Guess that's the, the red potion. Brimstone with brimstone makes Big Bang. Ooh, like a firecracker. I always wanted a firecracker. Spider's webs and butterfly wings makes... What is that? A chain around a chaotic symbol? Chaotic like... like magic? Chain magic? Bind magic! Bind magic. We can make this one. So... Spider web and... Uh, butterfly wings. So green, yellow, blue. Green, yellow, blue. Green. Y 
yellow. Just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Bind magic potion. The magical essence in this vial is supposedly used for binding magic. Whatever that means. Okay, binding magic. Uh, okay, so let's see. Light is a leaf potion. Can we drink it? I'll just take a tiny little sip. <laughs> Bitter. I do feel a little less weighty. If I put my mind to it, I could probably jump quite high. Okay, get this vial. Really interesting, yeah. This is. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, I should save some of this stuff for the Olympic Games next year. It's a safe bet. I dominate the high jump and pole vault contests. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we have the red one. Ow! It burns. Burns. Okay. Sounds like something's burning. <laughs> it smells like sulfur. Okay, so burning with burning with catalyst, I think, is the, the bomb. Yeah, burning, burning catalyst. Let's do that. And the second one is cloud burning catalyst. Cloud burning catalyst. Okay. Oh, I, I, I could just click again. Just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Cloud burning catalyst. Let's try that as well. So cloud this one. Brimstone. Catalyst. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Okay, good. We got new two new potions. So, oh, the vial, the vials are gone. Okay, so that means that we are done here. So this is invisibility potion, light is a leaf potion, binding magic potion, big bang potion. I made this essence using brimstone with brimstone, which obviously is a pretty explosive combo. So a vial with some nitroglycerin, really. Nitroglycerin, okay. Wind potion. It's a vial containing an essence that can bring back the wind from wherever it's been trapped. Nice. So, wait, 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 wait. Uh, we have invisibility potion. Light is a leaf potion. Okay. We have binding magic. Not sure how we can use that. 
we have Big Bang. Can we use this one to destroy the, the soul stone? Maybe. Now we have wind potion that we need to use to free the wind. Okay. Why did we need the crow? It's crow. Can you destroy the crystal? Can you do anything? <laughs> I don't think he actually can do anything here. He can just fly out of the window and that's it. Need some fresh air, Crow? Go on. Go for a walk. So how do you want me to crash through the window? Head or ass first, if you know what I mean. Eek, sorry! Why did we need Crow here? But okay. Can we use the Big Bang Potion? Yes, on the crystal. Let's see what's gonna happen. Run. Nothing. It just fizzled. The crystal seems to be in constant fluctuation. Maybe that's preventing the explosive potion from being effective. Constant fluctuation? What the hell do you mean? Do we need the binding potion to apply first? Okay, what? It's a crystal ball with souls trapped inside it. It's a crystal ball with souls trapped inside it. Okay, then big band potion. Nice. Oh no, <laughs> this dude is now flying up in the air. Uh, okay. We freed the souls. Can we free the wind? Guess we need to open the window. Ah! I know why we need crawl. But okay, let's see. Also, the big band potion is gone. So we still have invisibility light as a leaf, binding magic and wind potion. So let's see, do we just release the wind potion into the window? What if the wind just blows it back inside? No, I'll have to find a better way to distribute it. Yeah, we need to ask Crow to do that. Hold on to this vial, okay? Oh, sure, holding on to stuff is a specialty of mine. What for? I'll let you know. And then throw him out of the window. I want you to fly out there, Crow, as high as you can and empty the potion into the clouds. But what if there's lightning? I don't like lightning. Lightning has caused better birds than me to crash and burn. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'm the ever-faithful Crow. Yes, thank you, Crow. Uh-oh, I guess it's working. That's done with. There's still quite a bit left in the bottle in case you need it later on. Oh, nice. <laughs> We're just cruising. Oh no. Oh no. Dude, <laughs> hold on, dude. <laughs> uh... In his underwear. Oh no. Okay. He's alright, I think. Okay. We still have Crow. Uh, what can we do with him? 
don't think we can do anything with him. But okay, uh, we freed the wind. That is great. So we still have invisibility potion, light as a leaf potion, binding magic, and wind. No, I should get going back to Mercuria. Okay, so she wants to go back to Mercury. Let's save. Okay, that was fun. So now what? Let's go check out the maps guy because we did lose um, the scroll that describes what we need to do. So I'm interested what's gonna happen now. There you are! I'm in a mind to fire you. I expect you still haven't delivered the map of the Northlands to Tun Lyak at the Journeyman Inn. Oh, uh, I forgot all about that. I didn't. I couldn't By find the her. Balance. Get to it. Okay, so we don't need, I guess, the thing. Did you make your delivery to Tun Lyak at the Journeyman Inn yet? Oh, uh, I forgot all about that. Okay. By the balance, get to it. Um, well, let's try to visit the inn again. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that we need to go to the pier. But first, I want to check out the other, th other stuff. So, journeyman inn. Who's that? Who are you? Nobody? Okay. Yeah, this this is this guy. Sure, we have a beggar. Okay, let's go into the inn. Where's that? The back rooms are both empty. Excuse me. Yes. Oh, it is you. Yeah, it is me. Do you know when Tun Lyak is expected back? I could not tell you, child, but from what I know of the ships in harbor, so she's she still will not back. find one that needs a navigator any time soon. Okay, so she's still not Thank here. You, You're welcome, child. We still need to deliver a map to her. Okay, let's go to the pier. Wait, can we give this man coin? No, okay. It's interesting that we have only a single coin. This is new. Captain Nebeve? Huh? Oh, it's just you. Where have you been? Where have I... Don't you remember? I went north to find Roper Clax and get him to release the wind. Oh, I... You know, the wind did pick up mysteriously last night, but... Um... But what? But what? I don't trust it to not die down in a few hours. Or at the most, a day or two. But I destroyed the alchemist. I even set his prisoners free from the rock they were trapped in. Destroyed the soul stone. Sailed back here in his floating castle and... And you don't believe a word of it, do you? Not a word. Great. Mm, okay. I did defeat Roper Clax. Uh-huh. Do you have his severed head somewhere on you? I beat him. I didn't say I killed him. Of course you didn't. Can we set sail for Elias now? Well, the wind has picked up a bit, but I don't trust the good weather to last. I don't want to be sitting dead in the water come tomorrow afternoon, so I'll wait a few days more. Thanks for nothing. Can we give him a potion?
Yeah, so we can. Captain Nebeve? Huh? I got something you want. What? Well, out with it, girl. What is it? Oh, nothing. You do remember our deal, don't you? I. Um, remind me what the deal was again. That if I defeated Roper Clax and brought the wind back, you'd give me a lift to the Isle of Elias. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the day I see a girl like you bring down a powerful alchemist like Clax is the day I hire a woman to be my navigator. Sure. Well, look at this. <sighs> By the balance, girl, that's a strong grog you got there. What is it? Tyron spice wine? It's the wind. Watch this. Sweet jaw, that's a strong wind. You got some mighty powerful magic there, girl. I was wondering when there and was. There's more where that came from. Care right. to share some of it with us? With that magic. We could make good time to Guillen. Pick up a cargo full of apples and be back here before the competition got uh, wind of what was happening. Sure. If you give me a ride to Elias, as promised. Balance be cursed. Women aboard? When will it ever end? Jowls, bowels. Be here by this afternoon, or we'll sail without you. As if you'll get far without my wind magic. And you did say something about hiring a female navigator? Damnation! Do you insist on remembering every <laughs> little thing I say, girl? Don't you know that Jal has forbidden women from riding the waves? Don't worry, I will play some... Sounds like a some... bunch of sexist bullshit to me. But it's your choice. I got the wind in my pocket. Now you learn to treat women with a little respect. I've run out of curses, girl. Jal be damned, I am in desperate need of a navigator anyhow. All right, all right. You be here by this afternoon with your navigator. It's not as if I ever put much faith in the teachings of the drunken prophet Jal myself. Okay, but where is the navigator? We couldn't find her. We still need to deliver the map to her. Uh, but okay. It's Captain Horatio the White Dragon. Captain Nebeve? Huh? Oh, it's just you. Again. What do you want? What do you want? Thanks for nothing. Okay, so we need to find the navigator girl again. Wait, maybe she's somewhere there. Let's get check. Che oh. Where is the old man? The old man keeps his bird locked in there. Poor guy. The bird, that is. No, it's not there anymore. What? I wouldn't feel too comfortable about sailing anywhere in that. It's like a toy boat for children. Mm, okay, I guess we don't do anything here. So... Where can we find the navigator girl? Wait, what was that? One sec. No, just to do chilling, okay. Yeah, I got the star, congrats. So where the hell is the navigator? Stop guarding We need to find her until today afternoon or tomorrow afternoon. I don't remember what he said. Actually, let, let's let's check what he said. Conversation log. Need to go to the very end.
Gibt ihm Nebaway. This afternoon with your navigator. So yeah, we need to find her right now. So we've checked here, nothing. Uh, I'm actually curious, can we go to the city green and talk to our little guy? It's a flower bed. Does he tell us something new? Nobody's home. Okay, nobody's home. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's visit our friends. Huh? Where is this guy? It's a brown, slightly cloudy liquor. No, I can't hold down strong liquor. Okay, this dude is gone. I forgot his name. Brian, I think. West House. So no one's here, no one's here. We can check Enclave, Enclave later. Let's go check the journeyman in again. Oh. It's a blue woman. And you know, no big deal. I've seen it all. A blue woman is just run of the mill now. Yeah, just a regular avatar girl. I believe this that's our navigator. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm sorry, young woman, but I do not wish to speak with anyone presently. That's rude. Uh I have a map for you. Pardon me for intruding, ma'am. But is your name Tun Lyak? Yes, I am Tun Lyak. I have a delivery for you. Oh, a map of the Northlands. I had almost forgotten I ordered it. Sorry about that. I came by a few days ago, but you weren't here. No, no, I was looking for work. <sighs> Thank you kindly, young woman. I will need this map now, if I am to make it to Khorasan by foot. Why? Why are you going to Coruscant by foot? I can ill afford the cost of passage on a ship bound for the Bay of Fire. And since I do not have a job, nor the prospect of getting one, I have little choice. Are you from Coruscant? No, I am from the Southlands. I have never been to Coruscant. Then why are you going there? Because I am told that in Khorasan, captains allow women to join their crew. Here, in Mercuria, they do not. Well, so I've been told, but you shouldn't have to go somewhere else to get a job. That just isn't fair. Fair or not, it is custom. And custom is a difficult thing to change. Well, I have a job for you. Why are you so depressed? Is it that apparent to you? I do beg your pardon. It was not my intent to burden you with my dark mood. It's okay, I don't mind. I'd like to help if I can. I do not think you can. Unless you were the captain of a ship, and you could hire me as your navigator. But you are not. I know, and so such you captain. cannot help me. You are a navigator? Yes, and I have a letter to prove it. Do you want me to show it to you? Yeah, no, let's show I believe it to you. the captain. And you're looking for a job? I have been looking, now, for many moons. But most captains do not want women on their crew. And so I am leaving for Coruscant in the morning. I got a job for you, if you want it. A job? As a navigator? Yeah, on a boat called the White Dragon. We're leaving this afternoon, if you're interested. If you are serious, then yes. I am more than interested. But will the captain allow a woman as his navigator? Yep. This one will, trust me. 
Because if he doesn't, he's not going anywhere. Just pack your stuff and head down to the docks. Talk to Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon. Tell him I sent you. The name's April Ryan. Thank you, April. I am Tun Lyak. I am most grateful to you. Will you be going with us? Yeah, so I'll see you there. Thank you so much. She seems nice. <laughs> Weird walk now. Um, but okay. Uh, Barrels. Where is the... Where is the owner of the tavern? Guess we don't need her anymore. Okay, so we've got the navigator. Wait. It's a small wagon pulled by one of those strange beasts. But the bits beast is not there, and the dude is not there. What's going on in the city? Where is everybody? So no one's there. Well, just a bit sure. We did. Uh, we did uh, progress through the story just a little bit. We did hire the navigator. Let's see if the our friend is back. Nobody's. No. Okay. I just want to make sure that we finished everything before we sail on the ship. Nobody's here. Uh, let's go. No, let's go to the marketplace and to. Um, Wait, first let's let's visit here. We did deliver the map. Right? Right, we don't have the map anymore. Did you make your delivery to Tun Lyak at the Journeyman Inn yet? Yes. I took care of that delivery ages ago. Really? Well then I can finally fire you. You're the most incompetent errand boy I've ever had. Errand Give me book. the delivery list and get out of here. I don't uh, have it. I think I left that list somewhere far away. Ye gods, not only do I have to deal with your incompetence, but now the guild will skin my hide and hang it up to dry. Okay. Remember me? I'm trying my very best to forget, believe me. Okay, <laughs> so we're finished with this guy. It's the maps merchant. We're finished with this one. That's Let's... the guy in charge of the Cubs game. No, oh, we can't even talk to him anymore. I'm still curious about the head, but I guess that's just an ornament. This is a new thing, but okay. Uh, we have the creature. I've never seen anything like it. So I think we are done here. Actually, we have a coin. Yeah, we cannot put it into the fountain. Okay. Nice. Uh, wait. I need to remember that we have the potions. Invisibility. Light as a leaf, binding magic, and a wind push. Okay, I think we are done here. Let's go check out the temple. Maybe Tobias will say something new. And I still want to check encla the, the enclave. Oh, the Tobias is gone. Where is everybody? Enormous satin drapes. Where is everybody? Where is Tobias? But I guess this just means that we are finished here. You have returned oh. from your trip north. It is good to see you again. I was concerned. You're worried about little old me? That's sweet. And guess what? I kicked some alchemist ass while I was up there. Bet you didn't think I'd be able to do that. Then you have lost your wager. I knew you would. After all, you are... 
I was worried because of the trouble in the West. Trouble in the West? What trouble? The Tyran. They left the city all as one the evening before yesterday, and many of the vanguard with them. I fear there are dark times ahead. Okay, so it's big. You don't mean war, do you? War, yes. It has been an age and a half since our last war with the Tyran. But relations have always been strained, and now, whipped into religious fervor by the vanguard, the Tyran are thirsty for blood and for revenge. They are a people bound by violence and without honor, and easily seduced by the prospect of a holy war. God, that's horrible. But the city's safe, isn't it? It's a big city. Yes, but unfortunately not well armed. Marcuria has not seen war for centuries, and people grow soft, forget how to fight. It can easily be taken by a strong army, and so I fear our safety and yours. Okay. What did you mean when you said, after all, you are... Oh, give an old man his misgivings, April, but I should have trusted you before. Of course you should have. With what? With the truth. That you are the one who will watch over us for a thousand years. Yes. That you are of the balance. And the balance is in you. That you are the one born into the heaviest duty of them all. You are the guardian to be, April. The thirteenth guardian of the balance. No! No, that's a lie. I'm not your guardian. That's not possible. It is certain. I had my doubts, unfortunately. It could have cost us the balance. And I made a mistake. But it is certain now. You are stronger in the balance than anyone before you. God damn, Cortez. He didn't say anything about... If I'd known, I wouldn't have come here. I would have... I don't know what I would have done, but I wouldn't have come here. Maybe he did not know. Or maybe he did. And he knew it would be wiser not to tell you. But I am telling you now because you cannot stay here. You are too valuable. You must leave. Okay. I don't want to leave. You must, April. The Tyran are gathering their forces on the border to Irid as we speak. Come next week, this city may be under siege, and then you will not be able to leave. Well, I'm supposed to board a ship for Laius this afternoon. Then go. The islands are far away, and the Tyrant do not have ships. Before you go, I want to give you something to carry with you. I spent the night looking for it in the Enclave. It has been gathering dust for over 10,000 years. Oh, Tobias, I can't accept anything that old. You are not accepting it. It is yours. The Fathers have only kept it safe for the day when the Thirteenth Guardian would come to collect it. And now you are here. Please, take it. What is that? It is the Talisman of the Balance. Known to but a few. It is mentioned in one text only. The Scriptures of Reunification. One of the Thirteen Scriptures of the Balance. What does it do? The scripture speaks not of its purpose, but it is yours, whatever it is. I am certain it will help you once you find its purpose. It has strong magic, very strong. Thanks, Tobias. I really do appreciate it, even though I wish I didn't have to accept it. You are the guardian, child. Your fate is both glorious and terrible, but it is your fate. If you deny it, you deny our future. But I have faith in you, April. That's what I'm afraid of. What if I screw up? The balance provides. The balance protects. Trust the balance, and trust yourself. 
goodbye, and good luck on your journey. Okay, so we are the garden. Where are you going? Didn't finish with you. I look like a serving maid. Okay, I guess he's gone. I wanted to ask him if I want to go to Stark. Guess that's not an option now. So, diary. <coughs> Wednesday morning, August August 2nd, 2209. Westrom Tobias tell, tells me I am the guardian to be the, the 13th such, um, and that my fate is to watch over the balance for a thousand years. Yeah. Good luck with that, April. You don't just t toss something like that out without warning or some consideration to the fact that I'm just a normal person. I mean, if I'd been ri raised um, knowing that someday I'd have to do s some... I have to go to some tower in the middle of nowhere and stay there for 1000 years, then maybe, just maybe, um, I'd have been able to deal. Not like this, though. This is just not fair. I mean, I had plans for, fl plans for my life, I have friends, uh, not a lot, but a few, a family, whatever I mean uh, to them at this point, at least they're around. In a thousand years there will be nothing left of me, not nothing left for me, nothing to remind me of me, uh, I'll be lost and alone. I don't know if I can deal with that, but then what choice do I really have? What choice does any of us have? Okay. Uh, talisman of Balance. The Talisman of the Balance. Tobias gave this to me. Okay. All right. So we, we are done here, let's go to the enclave. Tobias did mention another scripture. Maybe we can take a look in, into that. And then we need to go away from here. So, okay. Enclave. Also this stone wall. Why is it important? Some kind of sandstone, but grittier. Uh, can I use this talisman? No. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, wind potion. Binding magic. Light is a leaf. Invisibility. No. Okay, let's go. So I do have one stone. I don't think I should use it until I retrieve all of them. So let's see. Do we have a new book here to read? Oh! Oh, goodness. It's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. Okay. Silver Spear of Garimon, Mercuria, Folk Tales. Let's look for a topic. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? No. So we don't have any new books. I forget. Thanks anyway. We all forget sometimes. 
actually, I don't feel like reading right now. Very well. Bye now. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Can we use the talisman here in the enclave? Come on, April, go, go down the stairs. It's a rusty wheel. Rusty wheel and a pool of water. Can we use talisman here? No. No. Can we use light as a leaf potion on the wheel? No. Binding magic? No, I don't think so, but just to be sure. Wind push. Mm. Won't budge. Can I show him the talisman? No. Mm. I think this is it. We don't have anything uh, to discover here, at least yet. There is like a locked door, but we need to find a way. Um, to use it, to open it. So we do have talisman. Maybe that's something that we need to put in the middle. Maybe we can put the talisman on ourselves. No. Okay. We do have this stone. Yes, it fits right here. I'm going to save and let's try to put it there. What's going to happen? Although it looks like it might fit, I think I'll hold on to it until I have all four pieces of the disc. Yeah, okay, correct. I figured that. So yeah, that's where we assemble the disc. What about the stone wall though? This looks weird. Some kind of sandstone, but grittier. Invisibility, light as a leaf, bind in, and wind. Talisman, I think I already tried the talisman. But probably this will open when we have the disc, so maybe this is the entrance to um the guardian realm okay i think we are down here we did everything that we could so the enclave no one's here we did everything here here no one's here so yeah i guess we go and set sail let's save here so i don't forget where it was yes yeah, so we're right and let's talk to the captain. Finally, we are ready. And we must away before it's too late. We still have another six or seven hours of daylight today. Come, come aboard. Did I tell you how much I hate water? No. Well, remind me to tell you sometime.
Chapter 6 The Gas Storm, okay. Oh god, my guts have been cleaned out and I still feel sick. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you, April. So what do we have here? Thursday late afternoon. Um, I'm so sick, I'm having a hard time writing even a few words. Forgive poor sp <laughs> I was wondering why why the E is missing. Forgive poor spelling. Why does the bot have to keep moving around? Why can't they make bots that just stay still? I mean, they got magic, right? Beats me. Um, we left port yesterday evening and I don't sleep a, w a wink all night. Just rocking, rocking, rocking all night long. And then there is the food which is like fish and apples. Yeah. Fish and apples. Every meal. Oh great, here I go again. Get to get some hair. <laughs> Poor girl. Fish and apples. Uh, okay, that's the navigator. To the bridge. I look like a real sailor. Arr, Maggie. Arr. Okay. Why does the horizon have to keep rolling back and forth like that? That's the cargo hold, and crew quarters down there. My bed's conveniently located right below the opening, to accommodate for those refreshing saltwater showers. Oh no. It's the apple barrel. It's half empty, and aside from whatever fish we're able to catch, those apples are the only food we got on board. Down below... Ocean. Guess when we have option to go to the bridge and down below. Let's go to the bridge. She looks interesting. It's Tunlayak, the navigator. Cabin door. It's a glass orb with a strange magical glow. It could be some kind of compass, I guess. It's probably some kind of compass. Those are the captain's private quarters and offices. Okay. It's Captain Nebeve. Hello, Tan. Are you enjoying the ride, April? I'd enjoy it a lot more if the ground wasn't moving. But the ground is not moving. The boat is. Hey, you try and tell my stomach that. How are we doing on time? With the help of your magic, we are crossing faster than I had ever thought possible. Give credit where credit is due, Lyak. This ship is the fastest there is. I can outrun a shadow ship in this old lady. When will we be on Elias? By sunset tomorrow, if the wind holds. How fast is it possible to travel by sea? I do not know. I have heard tell of a ship that once went so fast it took to the sky and disappeared. From time to time, sailors spot the ship as it floats across the heavens. It is said to be an omen. Okay. The Flying Dutchman, right? No, they call it bad luck. I have a question about your compass. Of course. What kind of compass are you using? 
It is just a normal spirit compass. When we are not navigating by the stars or by the sun, we use this. What's a spirit compass? I forget that you are not familiar with the sea. A spirit compass points always to the magical North Pole, and thus we may navigate according to it. It is very precise, and less affected by a strong magical source. Thanks. That's all I needed to know. I hope this knowledge made you richer. Keep her steady, Tun. I will, April. Captain? Hi. What is it? How long will it take us to get to Elias? We should reach the island by tomorrow night, unless we get bad weather. Any chance of bad weather? Well, as any experienced sailor will tell you, the weather is a freakish thing, and you never know quite what to expect. But no, no chance of a storm at all, or my nose would be itching. Well, the chapter is called the storm, or whatever. So that's gonna be interesting. What does your nose have to do with the weather? Well, that's a story, be sure of that. And? That's all. It's just a story, and you'd better be sure of that. Okay. I'd like to hear that itchy nose story. Why? Because I'm sure it's a real tall tale of the sea, filled with bravura adventures and victories snatched from the rabid jaws of certain death. I had a bad accident with my nose hair scissors, and ever since that day, when the weather's acting up, my nose itches. <laughs> nose hair scissors? <laughs> you gotta be careful when you trim those nose hairs. Aye. I've come to that realization on my own. <laughs> so, your nose itches when the weather's bad. A deep, scarring itch, as from the filthy bowels of the Mojal. Do you know any sea shanties? Jal be thanked, I do not know a single one. Not even a ho-ho-ho on a dead man's casket or something like that? If I went ho-ho-ho on a dead man's casket, girl, the crew would tie me up in the hold. With good reason, too. Would you like to learn a sea shanty? No. Actually, there is nothing in the world I want less than to learn a sea shanty. I would rather stick my head up the arse of an Elguan who's just had a dinner rich with beans and light a torch. I feel in the mood for a shanty. Yes, April. And I feel in the mood for a keel hauling. Thanks, Captain. Uh. It's actually Captain. Please try to remember, and while you're at it, cut back on the scurvy sea dog shtick, would you? Just trying to fit in, sir. You have as much chance of fitting in here as I do growing a second head, marrying myself, and moving to Coruscant to start a pottery business. Oh, and before you leave, Mind you only take two apples a day from the apple barrel. We're running a little short, and aside from fish, Jal forbid, we have no other food on board. Okay. Captain? Aye, what is it? Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Aye, now leave me be. Okay, so we are done here, I guess. Those are the captain's private quarters and offices. Okay, let's go down. Why are we? Watch! In? My nose is itching. Are you sleeping on duty again? Storm front. 
Whist, heading our way. Looks like a right old bugger too. Our... Okay. Aye, by the mercy of Jaw, it's a chaos storm. Where in damnation did it come from this quickly? And what's pulling it here? Navigator, change our course. We must away from the storm front and to safe harbor. I didn't uh -oh. check the downstairs. Let's go check the downstairs while well, we still have a chance. Uh, chest. Where is April? Oh, here she is. I don't look forward to another night in those. I had a dream I was on a roller coaster all night long, and I can't stand roller coasters. Oh no. X. It's a flower sack. It's a flower sack. X. It's a small axe. Take it. Oh my god, where are you going to take it? That's going to be useful for sure. It's a small but sharp axe. Okay. It's a sturdy wooden chest. It's empty. Empty. Huh. So why do we need an axe? Can we use it somewhere here? I'll just get in trouble. Besides, it's open. I'll just get in trouble. Besides, it's open. Okay. That's it, I guess. I don't see anything else here. Horizon have to keep rolling back and forth like that. So what are we supposed to do? Eat an apple? Jim? Who's Jim? Jim? People do not toss the apples back into the barrel after eating. Here's a nice plump one. Okay, we have an apple. It's a juicy red apple. I feel too sick to eat anything. Can we take? Oh, we cannot take anymore. It's the apple barrel. Okay, so we have an apple, we have an axe. Can we use an axe somewhere here? Let's go up again. Sir? Leave me be, girl. I have work to do. We must avoid the storm lest it comes on us like Jaws callous heel and crushes us. But we're still going to lay us, right? Ha! Huh. You can forget about that. We must avoid the dangerous waters of the islands and head straight for Guyenne if we're to stand a chance about running the storm. Hmm. But I have to get to Elias as soon as possible. The fate of worlds depends on it. And the fate of my ship and my crew depends on us changing our course for Guyenne. Now leave me be. Okay. 
have some good news about new RAM. This work on my six six thousand two per second. Text per profile one I didn't have errors on this profile. Good news, congrats. Uh, what if I threaten with with an X? No, no. What's going on, Tun? A storm approaches April, and it is no ordinary storm. What do you mean by no ordinary storm? Look to the clouds. Do they appear normal to you? Same they clouds. look strange, it's true. It is a chaos storm. A strong storm caught in a magical vortex, drawn to strong magic like bees to honey. I have never seen one with my own eyes, but I have heard stories. What have you heard about chaos storms? That they appear only rarely, and that they signify great and terrible events in the near future. It is also said that they are weapons used by the Dark Lords of Chaos to hunt and destroy those strong in the balance. Mm. Will you still be able to oh, get crap. me to Elias tomorrow? I misclicked. I am afraid not. The captain has ordered our course changed south to get us away from the rocky waters around the islands. We are about three days away from Guienne, but if the weather improves before then, Perhaps he will be willing to turn about. But I would not count on it, April. He cares much for his ship, and for his crew, and he would not risk it for anything or anyone. Can we escape a chaos storm? If we run fast enough and reach safe harbor, perhaps. I have not heard of a chaos storm to last more than a single night, and this one is still quite a distance away, but it gains fast. I do not know, April. You still need my magic to get wind in your sails. The wind seems to be picking up on its own. Thus Nebeve has no need for your magic, April. I am sorry, but once we reach Guienne, I am certain you will find passage to the islands. I don't have three days, Tun. The balance is failing. I am sorry. It is out of my hands. I have a question about your compass. Certainly. Won't the Chaos Storm affect the accuracy of the Spirit Compass? If the storm catches up with us, perhaps. But I do not think so. Only a very focused magical field in close proximity to the compass would be able to affect it. Mm hmm. Thanks. That's all I needed to know. I hope this knowledge made you richer. I'll let you go back to work. Thank you. So I have an idea. Maybe we can use magic on the compass. So we steer them to where we need to. Let me talk captain? to the captain again. Sir? Leave me be. Okay, be yourself, sure. So magic. Ha. But before we do that, I want to run around a little bit more. Just to double check that we... We took care about everything that we need. That's the ocean. Cargo. Took an apple. Just in case, let's take a look down below. Worm? Take. It's a flower sack. It's a flower sack. Then there was a worm.
worm. It's a big fat worm. Let's try to take it. It got away. Mm. Warm. Hmm. It got away. Okay. Can I use this on the worm? I look like a real sailor. Arr, matey. Sure, whatever. No, I can't use it on the worm. Can we... Uh... Use ap apple on the worm. No. Huh. Crap. Crap, how do I catch the worm? Leaf, maybe? No. Huh. Finally. We found a use for, for the sticky candy. No? Wait, 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 what? It's a colorful candy wrapper. Where is the sticky candy? Where is the worm? Well, ah, here's the worm. Ah, okay, 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 I see. Yes, got me a worm. Uh, and this is good because? <laughs> Free protein, April. It's a hungry looking worm. <laughs> she doesn't want to eat it. Okay. So we've got a worm. Huh. Ah, I know. So I'm pretty sure if I would just try to use my talisman on the compass, the captain or maybe uh, Tunlaik would um, would not allow me to do that. So let's try now. But now I'm sure we have everything. Did notice the worm I was wa wanting to try and do something about it. I can't do that while somebody's around. Uh -huh. So we can put the worm in the Get apple. Get to it, little guy. Eat your heart out. Okay. Now we give this apple to to the captain. Captain. What is it now? Captain, the worms have invaded the apple barrel. Curse it be the balance. First the storm, now this. Is there no end to the horrors? Let me see. Jowl's infected arsehole, you be right. Those are worms, all right. Vicious, snarling wheat worms driven mad by their hunger for a change of diet. As far as I could tell, that was the only apple infected. I could be wrong. Good of you to catch it, girl, before it's spread any further. I'll have to go pluck the apples immediately. They must be saved. Go faster. Okay, so we got rid of the captain, but Tunlaik is still there. I can't do that while somebody's around. Huh. So, it's probably something to do with the necks. Huh. 
Aha. Uh -huh. So there is something else. What do we need to do with an axe to distract Tanlak? Maybe we can just tuck her into something? Oh. Do you want me to relieve you at the wheel for a while? I am not sure if this is such a good idea, April. What's the big deal? I just hold it straight, right? Well, I could do with a short break to stretch my legs. Fine, but I will be back soon. And if anything happens, just call out for help. Nice. Of course, thanks. So why do we need an X? But that's okay. <laughs> she walks funny. It's the, uh, wheel? Is that what it's called? Nuh uh. Like they won't notice if I turn the boat around? I'll have to think of something else. Okay. So let's use the talisman now. So if the compass was pointing in that direction when we were on course for Elias, and now it's pointing in this direction. Oh, hell. I'll just wing it. Use the force, April. After all, who's the chosen one here? Yeah. You do you, April. Ton, need some assistance up here. <laughs> okay, so what do we have? Uh, April's diary. Feel a little better now, uh, which is kind of worrying because I so don't want to get used to this. I'm a definite land person. Uh, so between my toes, like the Bantu <laughs> elder said. Yeah. A uh, short time ago, the captain ordered me or ordered the navigator to change course uh, to take us away from the storm front. Now I know he probably has. Now I know he probably has the best interests um, of his crew at heart, but I get to think about the rest of the world, as well as my world. I need to get to Elias quickly. I feel that time is running out, and this chaos storm is only a harbinger. Harbinger. I don't know how to pronounce that. So using the talisman Tobias gave me on the compass, I think I managed to fool them into putting us back on the course for the islands. Now I'm just praying they won't notice before it's too late. Um, and then the storm won't catch up with us. Um, I've been lucky so far. I'm counting on my luck lasting just a little bit longer, please. Okay. According to Tun, this is a spirit compass, and it points to the magical North Pole. It's the, uh... Nuh uh Like they won't notice if I turn the boat around? I think I may have strayed off course a bit when I was at the wheel. I did not feel the boat turning. Well, I have a feeling we're going to miss Gien by a couple of hundred kilometers if you don't correct our course. Let me check the compass. By the balance, you are right, April. It is good you were aware of your mistake, or we might have ended up pierced on the deadly reefs of Tagate. I will correct our course immediately. Sorry about that. Oh, no. I let you take the wheel. I'm just glad we are back on course. Yeah, back on course. <clears throat> Don't be so obvious, April. Is it my imagination or is the storm getting closer? By the balance, you are right. The storm is catching up with us. We might have to ride it out. It is good we are nowhere near the islands. Or we would have to worry about reefs as well. Reefs? Nobody said anything about reefs. Ton, I have something to tell you. Captain! Sir! We need you on the bridge. 
The storm is closing in. Oops. By the foul bowels of jaw, you're right, Lyak. It's closing in faster than any storm I've seen or heard, chaos or otherwise. It's like it's chasing something or someone. All right. Listen up. The storm's going to hit in an hour or two. And I want everything to be ready. Tighten the hatches, strap down the cargo, wake up the watch, and by Joe's big toe, someone put a lid on the apple barrel! Uh-oh. They really should cover this up before the hold is filled with water. Oh, God, that's not a happy sight. Oh, God, that's not a happy sight. Hammocks. It's a sturdy wooden chest. It's empty. So we still have an axe. Why do we need it? It's a sturdy wooden chest. It's empty. So it's a chest, it's empty, it's open, but why do we have an axe and why can we use it here? Trouble. Besides, it's open. Hmm. Okay, let's go upstairs. I look like a real sailor. Arr, Maggie. She looks busy. He looks very busy. Hmm. Those are the captain's private quarters and offices. So they are busy. I don't know what they need to do. They really should cover this up before the hold is filled with water. Yeah, it's weird that the X can be applied to the chest, but nothing happens. So the chest is empty, it's open. I have no idea what are we what we're supposed to do. Where is our oh, we don't have our talisman anymore. Oh no. That's the talisman. I should take that off before anybody notices. Yeah, okay. What is that? What is that you have there? It's a necklace I misplaced, but I found it again, so no need to worry. What was it doing next to the spirit compass? 
Let me see that necklace right now. It's a valuable family heirloom. I don't let anybody touch it. Give it here. This talisman has the mark of the balance and of the sentinel. This is an object of great magic. The balance be cursed, girl. What by Jarl's hideous countenance did you think you were doing? I need to get to Elias as soon as possible. So you claim. But do you know what you've done instead? You've put the lives of everyone on this boat in grave danger. With the storm upon us, the last we need is dangerous waters. Thank Jarl's assassin, we still may have time to avoid the rocks of the Briston at all. But I swear by the honor of the three biased judges of Guienne that I'll have you before a court when, if we get to land. Check the compass, Lyak, and correct our course accordingly. And don't let this wench touch anything from now on, you hear? I need to place this accursed talisman as far away from the spirit compass as possible. Aha! Uh -huh. I see. He's gonna put it in the empty box so we can retrieve it with the, with the X. She looks busy. What just happened? Oh, this can't be a good thing. Yes, the chest is closed now. So now we use the axe on the chest. It's been a while since I chopped firewood, but I think I'll be able to knock the lock off pretty clean. Oh wow, April. Oh wow. Oh wow. Well, shit, indeed. Game over. Chapter seven. Deep blue mirror. Merman. Maybe. Maybe not. Where is the talisman? <gasps> Bird. <laughs> How did you get there? How did you survive the storm? Thank the balance, she's all right. Are you all right, April? April? Are you sleeping? She's sleeping, bless her little heart. Boy, is she cute. Too bad she's just a chick and not a bird. <laughs> April, wake up! Yeah, Titanic. Crow, I was so worried I thought the storm got you. Me? <laughs> Honey, I'm the sidekick. Didn't you ever read any legends? The sidekick always survives. So you're fine? A few singed tail feathers, and I'm so charged up sparks fly when I try to peck something. Other than that, better than ever. The sea air does wonders for my allergies. I didn't realize you had allergies. Exactly. Do you know what happened to the crew? Dead. As far as I know, they got away in the lifeboat. Ah, okay. There was a lifeboat? One of those magic fold-up types, yeah. I guess they forgot all about me. 
I think the captain said something like, Hey, let the wench drown and justice be done. <laughs> but uh, I could have been wrong. Wow. Small X, yeah, <laughs> looks like with just one swing, a little girl with a small X could just destroy the whole ship. <clears throat> Any idea where the lifeboat is heading? South, I guess. From what I can remember of the old man's stories about the sea, to God it would be the closest civilized island. Any idea how I'm gonna get to the islands now? You could swim. Humans swim, don't they? They must, or you wouldn't be here now. I don't swim. And nobody can swim that far. There's no land visible in any direction. Well, I'd suggest flying, but you don't have the necessary equipment. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try and find the closest island? I could do that, but I'd have to leave you on your own. Crow, I'll be fine. All right, all right. Don't blame a bird for trying to be a gentleman. Gentle bird, whatever. Gentle bird. I'll be back as soon as I can. Don't go anywhere. Where would I go? Girls always disappear on me. Trust me. <sighs> yeah, I forgot to, ho to call him when we were on the boat. Maybe that was an option. But okay. Oh, who are you? What the hell is that? Uh oh, for some reason the story of the bloodthirsty cannibal merman of the Sea of Song suddenly pops to mind. Merman! But okay, let's check out the diary. Friday, August, August 4th, 2209. It's sea and then deep shit. Um, not that they don't deserve it. Uh, whatever punishment I get, I definitely deserve it. I sunk a ship, jeopardized the lives of everybody aboard, and stranded myself in the middle of the ocean with a blazingly hot sun and no land in any direction as far as the eye can see. Not to mention the very obvious fact that I have no food or water. At least I get crawl. That's something. Not a lot, but something. I can think uh, of only one word right now, and it won't really do me any f any good. Help! <clears throat> if God of the Balance or some other cosmic force is watching right now, why don't we agree on this? You get me out of this, and I owe you a favor. Deal? Is that y is that a yes? Okay, uh, let's see what we got. Do we have the talisman back? No! Talisman is gone. Okay. This is all that's left to float of the white dragon. I'm either the luckiest person alive or the unluckiest person about to die a slow, horrible death. Might be one of the mermen I heard horror stories about. Okay. Debris from the white dragon. Debris from the white dragon. We need to find the talisman. I'm a long way from anything. I didn't know the ocean could look so big. I missed the head again. Okay, I don't think we have anything else here, unfortunately. Do you speak Arcadian? Guess not. Doesn't seem so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic up close, though, does it? There's something like a paddle. We don't have anything like that. We do have a few potions. We can call bird. Probably this is what I'm gonna do. But this head... Can I do something about this head? Hi! Do you speak Arcadian? Guess not. Doesn't seem so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic up close, though, does it? 
I can touch it, so let's try to touch it. When it pops up again. Hey, come over here and let me pet you. You're just like a seal, aren't you? Hello. Oh well. <laughs> Hold your breath, April. <laughs> no, bird. Gonna think we're dead. Oh, bloody typical. I told her she didn't believe me. Girls, Girls always, always disappear, disappear on me. Always. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, what? What kind of sphincter is that? But okay. Um. Captured, kidnapped, abducted by merman. I'm trapped underwater in a tiny little bubble of air. And why am I not panicking right about now? If I'm ever gonna panic, this would be the good time. I'm claustrophobic and I have a fear of water. This situation combines all my phobias into one tidy little package. And yet I feel relaxed. Like, it's all gonna be okay. It's gonna work itself out. April, listen to me. You're screwed. How are you gonna get out of this one? By using your head? Right. My head. Uh, that'll help me breathe underwater. No. What I need is some scuba diving equipment. Either that or gills. And I need to talk to these more people. Find out why they saw fit to rescue me and bring me here. Okay. It's a drawing of a man cutting his finger open and squeezing some blood into a bowl together with some green, mossy stuff. Then he mashes it together and... Oh, gross! He dips a black pearl in it and eats it. That's barbaric. Maybe the stories about the cannibal merman were true after all. But hey, in the next one he seems capable of speaking fluently with the creatures that brought me here. I wouldn't mind that, if it could get me the hell out of here. It's a drawing of a man, a human, sticking a strange polyp-shaped object into his mouth. Ugh! In the next drawing, he seems to be able to breathe underwater. Convenient, if somewhat radical. Okay. The walls look organic. And those blue things. Yeah, eat that. I think they're polyps of some kind. They live inside the wall and are part of the structure. National Geographic would go nuts over stuff like this. This whole structure looks organic, and there are polyps living inside the walls. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. These polyps must process the oxygen in the water somehow. That's how I'm able to breathe in here. It's the polyp I yanked out of the wall. Can you eat it? Oh, this is so disgusting, but I have to get out of here. Okay. So I guess now she can breathe underwater, but what does it's this It's a drawing of a man mixing some green, mossy stuff with his own blood, applying the mixture to a black pearl, and then eating the pearl. Afterwards, he's able to speak with the merman. How can we do that? This whole structure looks organic, and there are polyps living inside. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. Mm. It's a drawing of a man mixing some green. Exit. So I don't think we can do that, but we were able to 
create like a scuba diving equipment. Yeah, this is all we got. Okay, let's let's try this exit. They must have built that house specifically for air breathing creatures like myself. Sit in. It's a big seashell. There's a large black pearl inside the seashell. Take it. There's a large black pearl inside the seashell. This is our green goo. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. How can I take it? Or do I put this thing into here? No? The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. Oh, so this is some kind of entrance. We don't have an X anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, Guess we need to do something with that pearl, but I'm guessing we would need the sea the seaweed to create the mixture. One second. So it's a drawing of a man mixing some green mossy stuff with his own blood, applying the mixture to a black pearl and then eating the pearl. Afterwards, he's able to speak with the merman. Green mossy stuff with his own blood. It's a drawing of a man mixing some green, mossy stuff with his own blood, applying the mixture to a black pearl, and then eating the pearl. Afterwards, he's able to speak with the merman. So where do we get the green, mossy stuff? Elsa Pushpin, I guess we can use that on April. If this gets infected and I have to chew off my finger to fight the gangrene, I'm suing somebody. How things I do to save the world. Worlds. We've got our blood. A drop of my sweet, precious blood. Okay. But we need the green mossy stuff. It's a drawing of a man mixing some green, mossy stuff with his own blood, applying the mixture to a black pearl, and then eating the pearl. Afterwards, he's able to speak with the merman. So we've got the blood. We've got the pearl. We need some green mossy stuff. Maybe we can go into the city, but... Um, the seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. Do we use our blood? No. Hmm. Okay, let's try to go into the city. It's a more person. God knows what sex it is, but I'm sure it's not the one that kidnapped me. That one had smaller wings.
Why did you bring me here? Lucky me, I'm stuck at the bottom of the sea with Bubbles the Mermaid. There's got to be a way to communicate with these creatures. Yeah, give me the green master stuff. Spear. It's spear. A harpoon, I guess it's called in maritime terminology. Take it. Sorry. We can't take it, okay. It's a pretty blue crystal. We've got a blue crystal. We can't take the spear. First crystal. It's the crystal I took from the Marion's home. Green stuff, green stuff. It's a glowing green substance that's spread evenly across the walls, providing light and heat. Take it. It's a glowing green substance that's spread evenly across the walls, providing light and heat. Okay, so we need to combine our blood with this green stuff. Then we need to take this green stuff, put it into the pearl, onto the pearl. And now we need to eat it. The pearl has turned a golden color and it's glowing with magic. Uh, eat it. Wait, that's not the... That's not the black pearl. Interesting. It's a harpoon. I can't take it. I guess I need to use it to enter... Sorry. I didn't get much out of our first conversation, so... No point, really. I need to find some other way to communicate with her. It's a glowing green substance that's spread evenly across the walls, providing light and heat. Can't take any more of that green stuff. Weird. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. Maybe I need to be in the air to eat the the pearl. Yes. I've always had trouble swallowing pills, especially huge golden magical ones. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> okay. So now we should be able to talk to them. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled. Understand what I'm saying? Yes, we understand. Weird. I have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I shouldn't be able to understand what you're saying, but I do. You have passed the two tests of the Gatherer, Landwalker. 
breathing water and speaking the tongue of the Merum. You can serve us now. Serve us? Serve you? You have been brought here to serve us as the gatherer of Tanyan. What's Tanyan? Tanyan is life. Tanyan brings light to darkness and sustenance to our caves. Tanyan keeps the snapjaw from our children and heats us when it is cold. Tanyan is life. There's the green stuff. Where does Tanyan come from? Our gatherers collect it from the caves and shores of the islands, but there is less Tanyan to be found each season, and we need help. How does Tanyan do all those things you said? Tanyan provides warmth and light. It draws the harvest close. Harvest? The creatures of the sea that we eat, the golden tail, and the weed eye, and the sand eater. Fish? You're talking about fish. The harvest, yes. That is what we said. The harvest is drawn to the light and to the heat. But the Snapjaw are clever. They stay away. They know the light allows us better aim with our spears. Why can't you gather Tanyan yourself? We do. But we cannot move far from our cities. Oh no. Oh no, what did I just do? Uh, I have just discovered that I have a power button on uh, the docking station that I'm use that I'm using uh, with this laptop. Crap! <laughs> oh my God! How far did I save? God, that's loud. Ah, uh, that's annoying. So yeah, I have a power button on my docking station, and I didn't realize that that's an actual button. And I pressed that by accident. Great. How far did I save? No. No. Back at the docks, right before we uh, sailed away. So a whole chapter away. Wow. 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 Well, that's unfortunate. I guess I would have to repeat everything that I did last week, an hour or something like that. But okay, uh, I think that will be it for today. I will do that off stream um, before we, before the next Friday. So yeah, that was interesting. Uh, we completed a couple of chapters and the game became much more interesting all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, let's see. Can we raid someone? Sick. Um, but yeah, that was an unfortunate mistake by me. So, who do we have that we can rate? Guess nobody is playing this game, so let's see what do we have in the um in the retro category. Mm 
<laughs> Dragon Quest. Okay, we have another point and click uh, adventure, I guess. I've never played that, but we can see. Actually, that's not point and click adventure. Uh, but okay, that was a really interesting episode. <laughs> I lost like a third of it. But yeah, I will restore the save before the next stream and we will continue. Uh, but yeah, that was fun. That was interesting. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone for hang hanging out and please join the raid. And I really hope to see you next Friday. I will probably be streaming tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, but that would be uh, a game dev stream. We will continue working on the monster skills. So yeah, thank you everyone and have a good evening and bye bye.